And I want to give you a little bit of a um, a back seat, a backstage seat to Michael Pink. I've known him for over 40 years now. And he is known as, and I'm going to read this so I get this part exactly right, some of the stuff I need to read, because otherwise I'm just going to go way off. <laughs> Michael has pioneered the application of biblical strategy and natural law to sales and business and career. What I can say to you is that I am 40 years, 40 plus years later, still astounded at the gift that God has given to us, given to the body of Christ in Michael and what Michael does, because I experience it on a regular basis. He is a grace gift to the body of Christ. Somehow, some way, I don't understand, the Father hasn't shown me his mind on this, but he decided that he was going to take somebody and he was going to gift him with the ability to understand business and sales and careers and advancing the kingdom, making money. He was going to give somebody a gift for that, for the body of Christ. And that gift is Michael Pink. And I've experienced it over and over again. Some of you have seen my video before coming in here, where it's just one story I told and one of the biggest deals I had to date in a publishing that was at a standstill. And the Lord said, call Michael. Well, why call Michael? The Lord could tell me. He gives the body different parts. And he gives us different grace gifts. And so he said, you know, the guy with the grace gift that I, you know, call him. And, and in just, in just several hours, he managed to solve that problem by using, if you can, if you can imagine, and I think this is what he used, but he has this teaching where he talks about God gave him the, um, the ability to look at scripture and understand the concepts in scripture and give him wisdom out of that. He took Paul's letter to Philemon and put together negotiating secrets for business from that letter. And that's the kind of thing that he does. It wasn't too long ago, probably less than a month ago was the last time I called him about something. And again, it was call Michael because <laughs> I know he's gifted in this area. And, and it just within a couple of hours, what he came up with was genius was genius. And it just cleared the pathway. It was kind of like, well, of course, that's what I should do. <laughs> it just made sense. So I watched, and I've been continually astounded. Now, Michael has wrote one of the best selling business Christian business books of all times. Now, here's what you don't know. You probably know that about Michael. Here's what you don't know, is that I knew him then, and watched him do this. And I was in publishing writing books as well. Whereas what I would do is I would I would publish the book and give it to the publisher and see what the publisher did. And sometimes the publishers did stuff and sometimes they didn't. Michael practiced what he preached. He took what he wrote in the book and the principles that God showed him and he started applying them and he wrote a best-selling book, but every best-selling book doesn't become a bestseller. He wrote a best-selling book, then he applied the principles in the book and made it a best-selling book. <laughs> so he practices what, he, and, and again, I'm watching him do this as I'm in publishing as well, Christian publishing, and I'm just looking at him and I'm going, wow, the wisdom. And you know what? For Michael, it comes, it seems to come naturally to him. Now, since then, he's published over 20 books with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of copies sold. And some of his some of his best-selling copies, I'm going up here so I get the titles right, are The Bible Incorporated, Seven Secrets of the Sale, and The Rainforest Strategy, and many, many, many more. But some of you may never have heard of Michael Pink. And it's like, well, you know, same thing with me. Some people go, you've sold 10 million books. I, I, did, I haven't heard of you before. Some people, the same thing with Michael. Well, why? If he's the person that God's gifted to do this, why? Because Michael is about, because this is what he's called to, training the body of Christ, not getting out there in the limelight, not doing this stuff and, and making it big for himself. Although he naturally, the things he, the things he touches turn are blessed. It just happens because he knows and understands the principles. But what he's called to is helping those in business and in sales 
and those that want to advance their career. He's called to helping you. So he has private groups. He has his books. He has counseling. I got to read this. Okay. He, he recently, like there's high level Christian business people and, and not necessarily running Christian businesses that call him like myself, but bigger, bigger and big companies that call him to get advice or call him in to change things around. And he recently took, a, listen to this, a fledgling sales organization from three struggling agents to the fastest growing real estate brokerage in America and the 16th fastest growing company on the Inc. 500 list. And again, when I hear about it and I talk to him and I'm telling, he tells me the stories, it just, it, he, he, he almost tells that story like it's nothing because he doesn't realize sometimes how incredibly gifted he is <laughs> because he's so focused on just helping you get ahead because that's what God has gifted him to do. So Michael Pink is a modern day Solomon as far as his wisdom for business goes that embodies Matthew 6.33. He is all about, and I got to say this about him, he is all about his relationship with God. He is all about seeking the Father. He is all about getting the Father's wisdom. He is all about being on his knees, praying for the people he helps. He is like a modern day Solomon, but with Christ in him and him in Christ. Matthew 6.33, he's seeking the kingdom and his righteousness. My friend, who I'm privileged to call a friend, not only because he's an amazing friend, an amazing man of God, but I'm privileged to call him a friend because I get to call him. <laughs> and so I want to present to you a, an amazing, astounding gift to the body of Christ, my friend, Michael Pink. Rick. Man, I couldn't have written it better myself. <laughs> I am I'm deeply touched, you know, because we do go back 40 years and we love each other. We kid, we kid each other. We've been through some battles together, uh, not with each other, but helping each other through some hard times over the years. And um, it's an honor. And I want to thank you. Thank you for the warm introduction, Rick. I really appreciate it. And for everybody else on the call, um, I'm going to do my best to in the next uh, hour that we have approximately to live up to everything that Rick has said. I've got some very important things I want to share with you. I spent a lot of time preparing in, uh, for tonight. And I decided I was going to do something a little bit different even than I've done it in the past. I'm going to do my level best to give you as much as I can. I'm going to squeeze as much out of the toothpaste tube, if you will, as I can tonight. Now, it, admittedly, I mean, I could I could literally go on for 36 hours and then take a break and start again. So I, I have to bear in mind my time constraints, but I'm going to try to make every minute as uh, valuable as possible. So I'm going to start with I'm going to sh uh, share my screen. <clears throat> this is called God's Best Kept Secret. It's 101 strategies from biblical wisdom, natural law for success in sales and business. And it's 101 strategies because I asked God about this, uh, you know, going back a year and a half ago. And he started to unpack. I, I had spent the last 40 some odd years learning and applying the scripture and, and, and testing things out before I ever taught them. Because everything that I'm going to teach you and everything I'm going to refer you to, I've already tested. And so that's why it takes 40 years to put this together. I put together the book series, God's Best Kept Secrets, which you're going to have an opportunity to get. Their books aren't expensive. You don't make a lot of money in books. But I put together a special price for you. You can get them at the end if you don't already have them. A lot of you probably do. And that's fine. But I want to make sure they're available to everybody because this was something that God gave me to do. About, a, uh, I'm trying to get my time frame right, maybe a year and a half ago, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'd like to have uh, some high ticket things to, to present uh, you know, out there and do what I used to do with uh, my, my retainers were five, ten, and $15,000 a month retainers that I would use to help people with. And I had my plate full and I was happy doing that. And I hadn't done it for a while. I thought, I'm going to do that again. And I said, Lord, give me an idea of what would be the right thing to package. And he said to me this approximately, he said, I didn't give you all that insight and all that wisdom so that only the people with the most amount of money could afford it and nobody else could get it. I want you to make it widely available. 
I said, yes, sir. I don't know how this is going to work, but that's what you say. That is exactly what I'll do. So tonight, you're going to be told about God's best kept secrets, a four book series, but it will blow your mind. And I, I want you to have this because we're headed into some really challenging times this year and next year. I mean, with, I mean, the world has got nuts. There, there's a lot of stuff going on. And, and I think we need to be equipped to be calm, to not be afraid. And one of the ways to not be afraid is knowledge, because the lack of knowledge is oftentimes the source of fear. People are afraid because they don't know something. But once they know, well, then fear tends to go away. So uh, a little bit more about me. I reside in Sarasota <clears throat> with my wife, Judy, and our Labradoodle, Judah. And we live in Sarasota, Florida. That's our, my wife and, and our, <laughs> our doggy behind her. Now, tonight I'm going to share with you three big secrets. They're going to come from three sources. Number one, biblical law. The manifest wisdom strategies and practices for success in life. The Bible is my premier textbook. I studied it, you know, in, in great depth with the light of the candle of the Holy Spirit to help me. And that's where I'm going to be sharing from number one. Number two is natural law because it is the physical representation of God's laws and ways. When you see the systems out there that he's built, whether it's a tree or the ocean or any kind of system whatsoever, when you see that system, you know that he made it, he designed it to work a certain way. And if you learn how he does things and apply those ways to your business you can thrive so i'm going to be talking about that and number three something more recent that i've uncovered is called universal law it's the unseen laws that govern the universe now here's the thing folks a lot of people think well you know what's this what's the, what's my apple tree got to do with my business well i'm going to tell you right now it's got a ton to do with your business if you want it to what's it got to do with entrepreneurship what is universal laws like gravity or or kepler's laws of motion or, or planetary motion or or uh, you know, anybody's I can I can name different laws that are these universal laws. What's that got to do with business? Well, I'm going to share with you a little bit about that. But tonight I'm going to have three goals specifically for you. This is what I prayed about that I want to have happen for you. Number one, I want to help you to step into and fulfill your God-given destiny and purpose. Now, I don't want to just rush over that because it's so important. I hear from people regularly that say, how do I know what I'm supposed to do? Or they'll say something like, I feel like God wants me to do this, or he wants me to do something. I either don't know what it is, or I don't know how to do it. And tonight, I want to put something, some light on that for you, so that you won't be left wondering again. And that's number one goal. Number two goal is to introduce you to something called multiplication instead of fractionalization. Those are my terms. Because you see, we've been conditioned in this world uh, to think about fractional increase. Like, oh, we had a 12% increase in sales this year. Like, yippee, yay. That's not multiplication. That's fractionalization. The Bible says in Genesis 128, be fruitful and multiply. Isaac, in a year of famine, he sowed the seed and reaped in that very same year a 100-fold increase. That, my friend, is multiplication. If you were to buy into the, the, the whole thing about fractionalization, let's say you think, wow, we had a 25% increase. Imagine, imagine Isaac. He gets four seeds, just for easy math, and he plants them. And a year later, or you know, six months later, whatever it is, the harvest comes, and now he's got five seeds. Would that be cause to celebrate? No, it wouldn't. He's going to plant four seeds, and he got 400 seeds back. That, my friends, is multiplication. And that's what I believe is possible for us. I've experienced it, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about that. And my third goal is this, to help you to access the supply of heaven. That's promised in Philippians 4.19, where it says, my God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going to share something with you profound about that. And that's one of the highlights of this evening, because I know a lot of people struggle with that. They got vision. They don't have provision. Hopefully tonight I can help you get past that. And if you stay under the end, like Wally said, there'll be a free download for one of the best selling Christian business books of all time, the Bible Incorporated. There'll be a free download for that. And you'll be offered, if you want. A one-month scholarship to the Jesus School of Business for just one dollar. Anyway, that's what's going to happen at the end. In my background, <clears throat> I'll share with you. As Rick said, I've written 20 books, selling hundreds of thousands of copies, lectured in universities like Regent University, uh, University of Miami, University of Zagreb in Croatia, uh, Cedarville University in Ohio. And matter of fact, the, the University of Charleston, South Carolina, I put on an event there and, and um, had some pretty good speakers, Tim Scott. One of the speakers, a presidential candidate right now, spoke at my event, introduced himself to my audience. Good guy, by the way. Um, 
I was on the radio on about 200 stations across this nation for about seven years. It's only a you know, short, like two minute spot, but I did that for seven years. And uh, as Rick mentioned to you, we did something uh, with a friend of mine and uh, got on the Inc. 500 list. So though, that's a little bit about my background. Enough of that. What I want to talk to you about is you. And this first thing, this is a key driver. And I want you to touch, touch this, this point with yourself, this whole thing about destiny. We're going to go slow enough in this so you get it. Okay, it's really, really important. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship. In other words, you were crafted specifically for a reason. You're his workmanship, not a passing thought. You are his workmanship. He made you out of the dirt, essentially. And he breathed into you. Everybody else, he just spoke into existence, but not man. No, sir. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Why? For good works. What good works? We'll talk about that. Which God has prepared beforehand. That we should walk in them. There are works, things, and you know it. I don't think there's anybody on this call who doesn't really at some level know that, yeah, I feel like I'm supposed to do something. I just don't know what it is. Or maybe you feel like, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I don't know how to. Or I know I'm supposed to, but I I don't have the money to get launched. I don't know what to do about that. Well, I want to help you with that tonight. You are hardwired for success. God himself crafted you and hardwired you for success. But the world, but life has programmed you for failure. It tells you look for a 10% increase. It tells you to do all kinds of things you don't have to do. Uh, and it's kind of programmed you for failure. Because you see, we have an adversary who seeks to devour you and keep you from fulfilling the divine call in your life. And I believe that the devil knows about your calling, that you have one before you ever do. And if he can get you off track or destroy you or get you off in drugs or whatever it is, he can get you going down some wrong path or get you bankrupt or get you disillusioned or get you depressed or sad or something. Anything he can do to keep you from recognizing that, oh, wait a minute, I was crafted. I am his workmanship. I was done. He did this for, for me to do some good works that he's prepared for, already prepared for me. The battle for your destiny, by the way, is normal. Peter said, resist him, referring to the devil, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers, by the brotherhood. I want you to understand something. We all have this battle. Every one of us have the battle like, oh, God, what, is this really you? Did you really put me on this? Are you really wanting me to do this? Oh, that's too big. We're afraid sometimes to believe what he says about us. And that battle is very real. And that's what the devil does. But, but Peter said that may the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, perfect, which means to mend. To make perfect or to restore. Now, maybe somebody can put it in the chat, but does anybody here right now feel like, yeah, I need the Lord right now to mend me, to make me perfect, to restore me? Does anybody, anybody feel that at all? Tonight, I need that. I need to be have that perfecting going. I need to be established. I need to be made firm. I need to be strengthened. That word strengthened means to invigorate. My God, don't you want to be invigorated and just tear up the world, so to speak? I mean, that he's ready to do that and settle you on a stable foundation. This is what he's all about to do that for you. My friend, I want to tell you something. You have, you definitely know you have a sense of destiny, but maybe you've been knocked off that horse. Maybe you thought life has passed you by. Maybe you thought you screwed up so bad you'll never be able to be used to God. That is not true. Destiny still awaits you. It is still calling for you. And I want to see you do it because I need, as part of the body of Christ, we all need each other to step into the role God made us to be. And as one man, the body of Christ to stand up and really, really turn things around and turn our country upside down or right side up, I should say, and turn this world into a much you know, better place that where the light of Jesus is shining brightly. Now, we struggle to see it through to fruition. Why? We don't know what it is sometimes. Uh, we don't know how to get started. Are, we're unprepared for the battle. Like we had no idea it was going to be this hard. You should have known, but we didn't. <clears throat> we don't recognize who our battle is with. We, we don't have the, the uh, knowledge, the, the, the skills or the inner resolve to fight the good fight of faith. And I'm telling you, that's a real fight. And that's part of our problem. If you want to fulfill your destiny, does 
anybody here want to fulfill your destiny? Let me ask you, do you have one and do you want to fulfill it? Let me see something going on in the chat. I want to know. Do you want to fulfill your destiny? Do you know you have one? Maybe you don't know what it is, but if you have it, you want to fulfill it. Well, good. Good. Here, here, here's what I'm going to say to you. Number one, you got to believe what God says about you. Believe what his word says. Don't believe what anybody else says. Don't even believe your lying self right now. That old nature says certain things. Forget that. Believe what God says about you. And what does he say? Now, I'm going to take the time to read you something. I wrote this many years ago for myself, to myself, from the scripture in the first person. You can see the first sentence is, you were created. Well, when I wrote it, I said, I was created. And everything was in the first person. But I'm sharing this with you. And by the way, lest I forget to say this, if anybody wants the destiny creed with the footnotes, <clears throat> you'll notice there's little numbers there, one, two, three, and so on. Those are actual scripture references. I have all that on a document. If anybody wants that, be sure to let us know. I'll make sure we get it out to you. But listen carefully to the words. If you've been burned, if you're like a burnt stone and you feel like, I don't know, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. It says, I got to read it off the screen here. You were created in the image of God, crowned with glory and honor. To glorify him by completing the work he gave you to do. You, my friend, are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Now, every word of this is scripture, every single word. Therefore, be fruitful and multiply, replenishing and subduing the earth. For God made you to have dominion over the works of his hands. By faith, by faith, obtain a good report, not growing weary and well-doing but reaping in due season, walking in wisdom, and redeeming the time, for the days are in fact evil. You were created for his pleasure, purchased with his blood, delivered from darkness, made alive in Christ, transferred into his kingdom, seated next to him in the heavenly realms, and called with a holy calling. So seek first his kingdom, not looking back, but pressing into it with unrelenting force, destroy the works of the devil. And be about your father's business, doing it with all of your heart, that you may apprehend that which you were apprehended for. And with all diligence, my friends, make your calling and election sure, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching ahead, pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And be strong, do exploits, trample the lion, the cobra, the dragon under your feet, for he has given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will by any means hurt you. Fulfill the ministry you have received. From the Lord. That's 29 verses of scripture woven in a conversation way, which, by the way, is how they're, they're woven together in the Bible incorporated book and most of the, a lot of the books I've written. But I found this to be very uh, powerful and motivational. I wanted to share it with you. And if you want it, put a note in the chat and say, please make sure I get a copy of this and we'll get it out to you. So you got to believe what God says about you. Number two, with that truth, you can reverse every failure. You can accelerate every success. Don't remain stuck in the morass of past failures. Look for the divine spark. The divine spark. Oh my God. I, I just thought of that term not that long ago. The, the divine spark is amazing. You see, <clears throat> that picture there is a vehicle flying over a cliff. That's me. That's an actual photo. Now, actually, that's not me in that photo. It's a representation of what actually did happen. My very first uh, divine spark occurred in 1973 when I was 17 years, almost 18 years of age. And I was driving across the Trans-Canada Highway from Calgary, Alberta to Vancouver, British Columbia, going across the Continental Divide in the Rocky Mountains. And I fell asleep at the wheel around 630 in the morning. Not a good thing to do. And I had my seat reclined so I could be comfortable. My friend was sound asleep in the passenger side. And I crossed the oncoming lane of traffic. There wasn't any, fortunately. And I hit the gravel. And after the gravel, I was airborne, like this vehicle you see here. And I'm flying through the air, but I'm awake now. And I'm looking at this. And I'm thinking, this is the first time I've ever flown. And I'm holding onto the wheel, wondering what's going to happen next. And it was a beautiful flight, having never been on a plane before. This was rather exhilarating. Until, of course, that car hit the first boulder on the way down the mountain. And it bounced end over end, over end, over end, over end, over end, over end. I thought it was never going to end. But it got to the bottom of the mountain and we crawled out of the car, waited for it to explode. But of course, it didn't. The only disappointment of the day. We crawled, we hid behind a rock, and then we realized it's not going to blow up. And we had to climb back up the mountain. My friend had a cut on his eye and a cut on his chin. Me, on the other hand, we didn't have seatbelts on. The police say I was going 85 miles an hour. I can't verify it. I was asleep. 
But by the trajectory and where we landed, that's what they estimate our speed was. And I didn't have a cut or a scratch or even a bruise. We hitchhiked back to town to the nearest city and, and caught a bus, the remaining 400, whatever it was, miles back home. And on the bus, there was a man who sat beside me, Christian man, really old, probably 50, 60 years old. <laughs> I was 17, remember? And so we're, we, and he says to me, I told him my story. He said, wow, God must have a plan for your life. And when he said that, two things happened simultaneously. I reviled at the notion of religion, but I was deeply, deeply intrigued by the possibility that God might want to hire me, that he had a work for me to do. And I thought, man, you know, I mean, I've worked for some companies before and, you know, but my bosses were low level people to think that I, <clears throat> possible you could get a job with God. That's pretty amazing. I'm interested in that. Well, the bus ride ended and, you know, a little while. It's a few weeks later, I ended up getting born again, finding Jesus Christ was born again. It's a wonderful story. I can't tell it to you tonight, but that was my first spark that God had a plan, a destiny for me. And that was the thing that drew me into the kingdom, the realization of that. Now, destiny has a path, and I'm sharing this path with you. It's my path, but I'm going to share it with you because I think some of you might benefit from recognizing the path that you've been on because you're thinking, uh, you're waiting for like this moment, maybe when Paul, uh, you know, the, had a visitation and, and Jesus said, why are you kicking against the pricks? And, uh, you know, and he's, he's the, oh, Lord, you know, he didn't know. And then he's blinded. Well, maybe you're waiting for an experience like that, and maybe it'll happen, but most of us don't get that, and I didn't either. But I found out there is a path and destiny has a path and so does yours. And here is what I want you to see. When I was 19, now a year and a half later, uh, I was a forklift driver in a big manufacturing place. We made cardboard boxes. It was a union shop and they went on strike. Well, I didn't want to go on strike. So I looked in the newspaper for an ad for a job. And I saw an ad that said, unlimited income, get paid what you're worth. I thought that's too good to be true. That's amazing. They can't possibly have that much money. They're going to pay me what I'm worth. They better be really rich because I've got some stuff here. I was really, really excited. I thought I can't, I better run as quickly as I possibly can down to that place and see if they still have that job open. And sure enough, they did. It was straight commission sales and it was selling life insurance. I was familiar with neither one of those concepts, but I applied and I was hired. Oh yes, I think they were hiring just about anybody, but I went through the insurance training and they said something to me on my in the course of the training after we got licensed is that they would send you to a city you were ne you've never been with leads for people who had their accident insurance and they in your job was to try to sell those people life insurance now just so you know it was a sort of a fixed policy in today's money it was about a seven thousand dollar whole life policy it wasn't a big policy but that's what they had and and so they said and by the way on your first week you know you should sell well anybody want to guess how many policies they think you should sell your first week I, I, I'd love to see what somebody thinks here. Does anybody, can anybody put like, okay, your first week in sales, you're, you're, they're going to give you some leads and how many policies you think? I'm going to see if I can click on something to see what the chat say. I want to see what you guys are saying here. Uh, let me see if anybody, somebody said seven. Peter, who are you, a <laughs> hundred? I love it, Peter. But no, no, it wasn't that. They told me, oh, I see 20, I see six, I see 20, I see... Uh, here's what they told me. And here's the thing. You know, what do I know? I, I'm, I'm 19 years old. They told me you're supposed to sell 50 policies. So you know what? I went out my first week. And as it turned out, I, I, I sold 50 policies. And it's about, in today's money, about $350,000 worth of whole life policies, but it was to strangers. Now, I had no skill. No skill. I had belief. Now catch this. I had belief because unfortunately at that age, I believed anything and everything anybody ever told me. So for example, because I was so naive, I was co-calling at 10, 11 o'clock midnight and even one call at 2 a.m. in the morning, co-calling on an Indian reservation on an island in the West Coast of British Columbia. And when he opened the door, he invited me in, bought a policy for him and his wife and all his kids because I didn't know you shouldn't do that. Can you believe it? But it happened. I had belief and I had favor. But then something happened. I did 40 renewals, 50 policies. The next week it was a little less and the next week a little less. And what was happening was it was kind of like Peter. You remember Peter when he walked in the water and he, he, he's walking up to Jesus, right? And everything's cool. And then it says he, he notices the wind and how boisterous the waves were. And he said, he says, wait a minute. 
You can't walk on water when it's windy. Not when the you got, you got a swimming pool, fine. You can walk across that easy peasy. But walk across rough water, no, you can't do that. And so he started to sink, and Jesus, of course, saved him. And a similar thing happened to me. I was like, huh, I don't know. I didn't realize selling 50 was a lot. I thought that was the minimum. I thought I just squeaked in. I was the only guy. Nobody came anywhere near that. I, you know, I had a class of, I was part of maybe a dozen other guys that were trained at the same time, and nobody else came anywhere near that. But I thought I just barely held on to my job. And so I left that job because I wanted something a little bit more secure. I got into a boat. It was called Dun and Bradstreet. I got a salary job as a business reporter, business reporter. And I was doing that and fine. I realized now in hindsight that those two jobs were not my destiny, but they were my path. I just didn't know it. Now, I want you to track with me because I'm going to reveal my path. And I want you to look back at your life and see your own path. The path to destiny for me included in 1976, a friend of mine in church said to me, how much money he had made that month. And it was seven times what I was getting paid at Dun & Brad. So I thought, wow, are they hiring? He said, yes, as a matter of fact, they are. And I applied for a job with that company selling copiers. And it, the change in my life was, the trajectory was amazing. I got started in that and I was in it for about six years. And I, I have to tell you, I did okay. Sometimes I did incredibly well, but mostly it was just mediocre. So in 1981, I thought, well, I want to have my own business. <clears throat> but without the right knowledge and only having desire, I lost everything. Can anybody relate to that? Is anybody ever thinking, well, I've, I, I've done pretty good here. I think I'm going to start my own business. And then it didn't work out so well. Is any, can anybody relate to that? Uh, it, it certainly happened to me because I didn't know what I didn't know. And that's a lot of times the problem. But here's what happened. In 1985, I had another divine spark. Here's my second one. Actually, the second one I'm telling you about, I've had several. Uh, but this was another one. I was, I'd come down from Canada. I was driving through Nashville, Tennessee on I-40 through downtown area. And out of the corner of my eye, the Holy Spirit points out a building. He says, Michael, that's where you're going to work. I looked at the building. and said, what is that? And it had a name of a person, a man's name on there. And underneath it, it had the name of copiers, like Rico and Savin copiers or Minolta, whatever it was. And I said, copiers? Oh, God, I don't want to sell copiers. I, I, I sold them in Toronto, and I did horrible. That was my last job. I Please, I don't want to sell copiers. But he said, that's where you're going to work. And what do you do? What do you do when God says, do something? I'll tell you what you do. You might wrestle with it a little bit, but you, if you're smart at all, you're going to do it. So I started in January of 86. I, hi I went to the place. I applied for the job. I got hired. They put me out in a branch office. And here's what the VP said to me on day one. And this is why you might recognize this was a, a divine spark. This was a moment that God spoke to me. And so he, on the first day, the VP says to me, Michael, here's the way it works in this company. For every four or five people that you demonstrate our copy or equipment to, you should make one sale. The national average is one out of four. Now, we don't expect any sales your first month because you're going to be cold calling and developing your own leads. But we want two sales your second month and four sales a month thereafter. I said, okay. But I was bothered by that. Do you know why? I was bothered because selling one out of four meant accepting a 75% failure rate. And I thought, what farmer plants four rows of corn and prays to God that just one of them comes up? So I picked up my Bible that very day and I said, you know what? God, you called me to do this. You're the one who told me to go to this place and apply for this job. And I got the job. You gave it to me. I didn't want to do this. But seeing how I'm here, you've got to show me how to do it your way because I didn't do so well doing it my way. And he told me where to begin. I began the book of Proverbs. I did something I had never done before. I read things like Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4. It says, bind mercy and truth around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And I thought, you know what? I need favor. I need favor. I want God's favor. I want the guy down the street looking at me and looking at the competitor and saying, I don't know why, but I like this Michael Pink guy. I'm going to buy from him. I wanted every advantage I could possibly get. I did other things. I, I figured out how do I bind mercy around my neck? How do, how do I bind truth around it? What, do, what does it mean to write it on the tablet of my, of my heart? Well, I found out and I did it and other things. And 90 days later, at our first, my first quarterly review with the, all my peers at the country club where we did it every quarter, there was a review. And when it came to be my turn, all, I had to put all my results on a screen. There were 20 some odd sales guys there, plus management. And you had to say what your results were. And I said, I've been here 90 days and, and, and I've done 22 presentations. And I've got 22 sales. It was three and a half times a number that nobody had ever achieved. 
and it was 100% closing rate. And I didn't use pressure. I didn't have to do any of that kind of stuff. It was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And, and, and I finished the year at about 90 some odd percent, the low 90s in terms of closing, setting a record for the most copiers ever sold in a single year. And, and I worked less than anybody. I, I took a two week vacation to Europe. I, I just, I didn't believe in having to, you didn't have to bust your hump to work hard. You could just, I sought the Lord. I learned how to spend time with him in, in his presence by the river in Murfreesboro, by the Stone River Dam. Some of you might know where that is. And I sought him and he would give me strategies and how to do things. And it was amazing. <clears throat> At the end of the year, the, the president said, basically, made me the sales manager of a, of a team of five guys that were failing. He wanted to see if what I knew was transferable because up to that point, they said, he's from Mars. He's not from here. And they had a half right, you know, I mean, I, I am, my new man is, if you will, is seated in heavenly places in Christ. I, I'm not so earthly bound as you might think. And I, I have a whole new perspective and it's changing everything about me. So yes, I took on that responsibility. And guess what? 10 months later, my team was up 430% year to date over the year before. Now, just so you know, I told you I was going to talk about multiplication. That's not fractionalization. That wasn't, yeah, we had a, we we're up 31%. No, no, no. 430%, four, almost four and a half times. That's multiplication. That's what I want you to learn and understand. Now, my path continued. In 1988, I thought, okay, I, I, I know how to sell. I'm going to start a company again. And I started another company because after all, 74% of millionaires came through entrepreneurship. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. But I learned that it takes more than sales skills to build a business. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Peter Daniels, my mentor, my dear friend, told me that he started business three times, went broke three times. And every time he would recover by going into sales, making a ton of money, pay off all his debts and go back out again. He found out that being successful in business was not just a matter of being good in sales. You had no other things. And I didn't know them at the time. And I ran out of money in about eight months. But then came another major divine spark. And I use that terminology, my friends, because I know I know by the spirit, some of you, maybe all of you have had or recognized, at least you probably all had them, these sparks where the spirit of God spoke to you. And you maybe thought, what was that? And it, you think, I kind of felt like that. And you may or may not have recognized what it is, but I do. And I want you to look back at your life and take a look at those divine sparks because God is leading you even when you don't know it. And so the divine spark came one night at church on a Sunday night. The pastor was preaching his heart out and he, he made a comment. He said, instead of asking God to bless your efforts, why don't you ask God what he's blessing and do that? Huh. I thought that's an incredibly good idea because I tried to get God to bless what I'm doing for eight months. I, I did everything I could to get him excited about it, but he just wasn't. And so I said, God, what are you blessing? Tell me that because I'm out of money. I'm out of options. I don't even have a job and my business is bust. What do I do? And he said, Psalm 68, 11. Psalm 68, 11 says the Lord gave the word. And great was the company of them that published it. Now, I'm a bit of a literalist, you see. And I said, Lord, you, you, you want me to publish the Bible, the word? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. But if you give me an idea, then, then, and then, then I'll get your word and I'll publish it. And I went for a walk that weekend, you know, next few days, and I got an idea for a book that became known as The Bible Incorporated. In your life, job, and business, that's the one that has sold hundreds of thousands of copies all by itself. We self-published it. There's an incredible, miraculous story, by the way. Anybody want to publish a book? Does anybody want to publish a book? Anybody here got a book in them? <coughs> if you've got a book in you and you feel like you should write a book, I hope you'll jump in the Jesus School of Business because I will help you do that. I will, when I say I'll help you, I'll tell you what to do. When I ordered my first 25,000 copies of this book, by the way, I didn't have money to pay for the shipping from wherever it was to my to my home. In, in Tennessee, let alone the $100,000 that was due when the books came in. But I ordered them. And when I ordered the 25,000 books, the printer said, Michael, are you sure you want to order that many? Don't you know? The average book published in America by real publishers who have distribution outlets and stores that order the customers from all over the country. Don't you know that they never sell more than 5,000 copies over the duration of their life? And you're ordering 25,000 to your basement. And you're just a guy with a basement, no distribution outlet. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know the rules. I thought everybody would want this book. I put my hand over the phone. I said, Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want me to do? And he said he was good with it. So I said, no, we're good with it. And all I had to do was sell enough books and, and you know, before the bill came due. And that was my strategy, just sell enough before the bill came due. And you know what? We did. We did. How? 
wasn't even going to tell the story, but I will tell you this much. We wrote the book, and before it came off the press, I took a, a prototype of it, if you will, and I drove around to the biggest, three biggest distributors in the industry at the time. The first one was called a company, a company called Spring Arbor. They're now Ingram Books, but they were called Spring Arbor Distributors. And I got there, and and I wanted to show them the mock-up of my book, and 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 I figured, you know, they're a distributor; they should order at least a thousand books. And so when I went in, and I met with the, the buyer, he said, "How did you get in here?" I said, well, through the front door. I mean, like everybody else, what do you mean how to get in? He said, how'd you get an appointment? I said, well, I called and I don't remember exactly what I said, but he said, we don't deal with people like you. You're just a guy. We call them mom and pop. We don't deal with publishers like that. We deal with publishers who have distribution outlets. We don't, no offense, young man, but we don't do business with people like you. And furthermore, you wanted me to buy, a, I told him he had to buy a minimum of a thousand books. He said, we buy from the biggest publishers in America, Thomas Nelson and Word Publishing and all these other guys and Tyndale and whatever. And when we buy from them, we buy one or two cases, 24, or 48 books at max. We're not going to buy a thousand from you. Are you nuts? It was nice, but he was firm. And I said, let me tell you something. This book is going to be a bestseller. It will be on national television. People from all over the country will be calling the stores looking for that book. And the stores won't have it. And they'll be calling you. And you won't have it. And by the way, if you want it, you've got to buy a thousand copies. They did. And so did the next distributor. And the next one bought 5,000. And we were able to pay for it on time. See, it's a great treasury. I'm not selling you the book. I'm going to give it to you. But I'm just saying it's got thousands of scriptures arranged topically on 101 work, life, and business topics. And in the process of putting that together, my mind got marinated in the word of God because it's pure scripture. Just like the Destiny Creed, but chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter. I was totally immersed in God's word. And that business was successful. And we sold the company to World Bible five years later. It happened to be after my wife's son was killed in a car wreck. And it was a very difficult time. And we sold the company. Now, but I stepped into something. You know, I've talked about God's Best Kept Secrets, a four-book series. I want you to get the books. You should get them. If you don't already have them, you should get them. Um, but I started a sales training company with a reservoir of biblical strategies that I was learning. It had things like the Moses questioning strategy. Who's ever heard of that? <laughs> Numbers 13. Fantastic. It had the negotiating secrets of Paul, which Rick alluded to, found in the book of Philemon. It had high probability selling, which is based on the parable of the sower. Um, great, the great business commission pulled out of Matthew 28. Uh, presentation secrets of Peter. A ton of more stuff is in this book. This is one book and I wanted to get an idea of what's inside it. In fact, I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to be quick, but I want to give you an idea. The Moses questioning strategy. What is this? This strategy has put millions of dollars in my client's hands. Now, to be clear, I don't mean in individual people's hands. I mean, my corporate clients have made millions with this. And it looks something like this. Moses was getting ready to send the 12 spies into the promised land. And he had seven questions he had to get answered. He knew they were going to be met with resistance, which meant there would be risk. If they were successful, there would be reward. And so the Bible says in Numbers 13 that he had seven questions he had to have answered. And what you uncover when you learn how to ask those questions, the way that you should ask them, opens up a tremendous amount of opportunity. I had a client that was an air conditioning wholesale company, meaning they sold a major, major brand of air conditioning equipment to local contractors who in turn sold them to people like you and me. And they were the big guy in town, you know, with the particular brand. And I, they were my client. And, and the gentleman said to me, hey, Michael, we're, we're calling on this big, big, big contractor here in town. But we've been calling on him twice a month for six years. And, and, and I've taken him out for breakfast and lunch and dinner. We've gone to movies together. We've been in each other's homes together. In other words, he was doing the good old boy thing. And, and, and he said, but in six years, I hadn't got a nickel's worth of business. Do you have any suggestions, any ideas? And I said, yeah, I just finished learning this, studying Numbers 13 for two days on the floor, in my office, on my knees, praying over three or four verses of scripture to get understanding. Because I'm going to tell you something. God seldom gives you the answers to the casual inquirer. You, you have there's a pursuit of him. There's an intensity. And I pursued him. And in the process of that, I came up with this thing. And so I said, yeah, there's seven questions I want you to ask. And really, they're not seven questions. There's seven topics. And each one had, you know, a dozen or more questions. And he asked me to write them out. And I did. And on Wednesday, he went there. 
like he'd done twice a month for six years. Only this time, instead of talking about the football game or their kids or the weather or whatever they talked about, this time he talked about what's in these questions. Well, he opened up things he never knew before. The next day, the, the owner asked him for a quote. On Friday, the, the company gave him a purchase order for 60, that's six zero, sixty thousand dollars He was blown away, called an emergency salesman. He put me in front of his team of 18 sales guys. He held up that sheet of paper because I hadn't told them where I got it yet. He said, I don't know what this is, and I don't know why it works, but I want every one of you doing it, and Michael is going to show you how. Well, they didn't like that idea too much, but they were ordered to do it, and I did. This was the end of March. They're heading into April. The previous April, they'd done $1.2 million in sales. They're hoping to do the same, maybe 1.3, but they were required by their boss to follow this mandate, to follow the strategy, and they did. And instead of doing 1.2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7, they did 1.75 million. When I went to see the owner, I said, how'd it go? And he told me his face was ashen. And he said, where did you learn this from? I probably made a mistake. I, I said, I learned it from Moses. He, he would have been less surprised if I just co-cocked him or something. But he's like, Moses, what, what, what are you talking about? I tried to explain to him, but I don't believe he was a believer at the time. And at any rate, this is one of the things that's inside book number two. And there's a lot of great stuff. High probability selling. Listen, this is a great secret. Watch this. The parable of the sower. You've probably heard about it. You've probably read it a dozen or maybe a hundred times, right? Here's the mystery. 17% of the seed in the parable of the sower produced 84% of the harvest. I don't know anybody alive, there's bound to be somebody, but I don't know them, who's ever done the mathematics on this to determine this equation. But it's a fact based on given assumptions, equal amount of seed landing on the four different types of soil, 17% of the seed produced 84% of the harvest. Now, if you know that and you know what each type of ground represents and you're able to, to choose the type of ground that looks the best by certain indicators, and you can put 100% of your effort into the place where it got 84% of the, the harvest, you will multiply your results. This is high probability selling. It's profound. That's inside the book. There's something else. I call it destiny launched. This Destiny launched. <clears throat> As I trained salespeople, their success was immediate, predictable, and substantial every single time. Now, to be clear and completely transparent, I'm not saying every human being I ever taught this to prospered wildly. I am saying that all my corporate clients did exceedingly well, and their people individually did as well. I gave you a couple of examples. Rick already told you about the Inc. 500 example, but I had an education company that a friend of mine bought, and they were insolvent, meaning they couldn't pay their bills, they couldn't pay their staff, and they bought them. He took over in January of 2011, and he said, will you come with me as I take over the company and help me? I said, sure. We flew out there. We took over the company. 90 days later, my job was simply to, to affect the sales. Give me complete carte blanche to do what I wanted to do. He did his own mastery. He did a one, his end of things and did you know a lot of great things. There's more than just sales involved. But at the end of 90 days, not only had we rounded the corner, but he had a million dollar profit. By the end of the year, he had 30 million in sales, 6 million in profit. I only tell you that to say what I'm talking about actually works. And it was then that I knew that I was walking in my destiny, teaching God's ways for success so others could find, fund, and fulfill their own destiny. I'm here today, tonight, to help you. It's my mandate. I know what I'm doing. I can help you. That's what I want to do. That's why God told me to write this stuff and then to get it out so I'm getting it out. So do you want to fulfill your destiny? That's my question to you. I know your answer is yes. So look at your path. What has God brought you through? By the way, it's been my experience that it usually starts off with a general idea or direction. And as you walk towards it, your purpose becomes clearer and clearer until one day, <coughs> one day you wake up and you realize you're doing the thing that God put in your heart. You know, Abraham, Abram, God, God says to Abram in, in Genesis 12, he says, hey, Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I'll show you. And he left. He didn't have a map. He didn't have a name. He just had a mandate to go a certain way. And as he went, it became apparent. And wait till you hear, I can't tell you to you now about Heron and the place and so on. The landmarks along the way are very, very moving. But he told him to do that. I want you to know that 
a, a lot of you guys have already started down that path and now you know that you want to do it and you want to do it bigger and better. And how are you going to do that? Well, I've talked about biblical law. Now I'm going to introduce you to natural law. This is this is deep and profound and very, very effective because Paul said in Romans 1.20 that the hidden things of God are revealed in the things that God made, even his eternal power and his divine nature. So I began to study the natural laws because it was amazing to me. Like, you know, sometimes when I want to learn something, I, I, I says, just show me how you do it. And when I can watch somebody do it, like, oh, I get it. But if somebody writes it to me in a manual, it's a little harder for me. But but show me, my goodness, what can you learn with that? So I, I looked at God's model and it was very profound. But how did I find it? This will blow you away. Maybe it blew me away, at least. I, you see, remember that scripture I said, I'm going to talk to you about my God will supply all you need according to his riches and glory. Remember that? And, and, and I want to ask anybody, put this in the chat, if you would, please. Has anybody ever, ever been in a situation where maybe you're there right now, where you're very much familiar with Romans, uh, excuse me, Philippians 4.19. You know what it says. But at the same time, you're experiencing lack. Like you're thinking, ah, but I don't have, but I know your word says, but it, my circumstances don't line up. Does anybody relate to that? Or am I the only guy on this program here that knows? Come on, let me see. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of yeses here. Okay, that's just being honest. I mean, I, I, I stood out in my driveway 30 some odd years ago when I started my publishing company. Come on, thank you for the comments. Keep it going. And, and I said, Lord, I know that your word says that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I believe every word in the Bible. I believe when it says bonded leather and it's genuine on the back of the book, I believe it. I believe everything it says. Printed in Nashville, I believe it. I believe every single word in the Bible. But, and, and I know you can't lie, but God, I'm not lying. And, and I, I, my needs, I have real needs and they're, they don't seem to be met. And I don't know what to do with that. Have you ever had an honest conversation with God about that? You should. When what you believe and what you're experiencing don't line up. He, he's not like, oh, no, they found out I'm fake. No, he's like, good. I'm glad you're coming to terms with that. Let's talk about it. And I went for a walk in the woods, as I so often do. Because I'm right in the midst of what he made. And he said this to me. First of all, I asked him a question. I said, Lord, you got all these riches and glory. You know, you, the, the streets are paved with gold. How do I get some of those riches and glory from there down here? So I can pay my bills. I'll even go to heaven, sweep the streets, get a dustpan, get up the gold dust. If I can bring it back here, cash it in and pay my bills. But I don't think it works like that. So what am I supposed to do? And he said this. I'm walking in the woods and I had another of those major divine sparks. And he said to me out of the blue, completely, completely out of the blue. He said, son, where did the tree? I was standing by a big cedar tree. Where did the tree get its wood from? Now, maybe you guys are all scientists, but I wasn't. I had no idea. I started looking around the woods. I thought, I don't know, Lord, at night, do, do, do little tiny, tiny pieces like sawdust, you know, creep towards the tree when nobody's looking in the daylight, everybody hides, and then at night, a little bit more comes, and it just gets bigger and bigger. I don't know. I don't know how this works. And he said, well, when you find out where the tree gets its wood from, you'll understand how to get my riches and glory in a spendable form. Now, I knew it was through photosynthesis, but I didn't understand it fully. It converts water and air into wood. Think about that for a minute. Take sunlight, a glass of water, and blow on it and see how many trees you can make. Well, there's a man named John the Baptist. Well, not quite. Johann Baptista von Helmholtz, born in 1580. First man ever to take a selfie. I don't know what kind of phone he had, but there it is. And he lived until 1644. And he did this in the early 1600s. Hopefully, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> he didn't take a selfie, but that's apparently what it looked like. And he placed, now catch this, this is really, really important. He placed a five pound willow tree, a little sapling, if you will, in an earthen pot containing 200 pounds of dried earth, dried soil. And over a five year period, he added nothing but water. And of course, sunlight. And after five years, 
he found that the tree that was five pounds was now 169 pounds and the soil had only lost about two ounces. So where in the world did the wood come from? Where did the extra 164 pounds of wood come from? It's in a room where there's only light and water and now there's all this wood. You see, metal was in the ground, you could dig it out. Gold was in the ground, you could dig it out. Iron was in the ground, you could dig it out. Copper was in the ground, you could dig it out. But wood used to be nowhere. So how did the visible come into existence? How did the invisible become visible? That is the secret to Philippians 4.19. So he said, when you find out how that works, you'll understand it. So I went and got ran out of the woods, got in my car, and I drove to the nearest public library. And I found out that there were seven negotiable elements, non-negotiable, excuse me, elements to convert the unseen into the seen. And they were the seed, the soil, <clears throat> the nutrients, Water, light, warmth, CO2. These are non-negotiable elements that are necessary. So you think, okay, so what? Now, here's the thing. Here's how you do this. You say, God, show me. Show me what this means. What is the seed? What is the soil? What, is, what does this mean? And I did. And I spent some time on it. Now, I got to tell you this. I'm a little sad to say this. Because this could be the subject of the whole evening tonight. And I had to struggle whether to tell you enough that you could look it up on your own and, and, and do it. Or just not tell you at all. I decided I'm going to give you as much as I can in a short time. And you can go deeper with it if you like. It's also a big part of the book series. And it's in, in the Jesus School. But here, here you go. The seed. Well, the Bible says in the parable of the sower that the sower sows the word. There's a... Part, if you want to know how to get the riches and glory, here's one thing. Let the sower sow the word, a specific word. I remember one time back in the 70s, I was in a financial situation, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and and and, and I said, Lord, what do you want? And I talked to me, and I, he said, turn to Luke 6, 38. And I read it. It said, given, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shake together, running over, shall men give under your bosom. I didn't even know there were 38 verses in Luke chapter 6. This was back in 1979. And I thought, well, okay. And I went up and I started giving money away the next couple of days. I mean, to strangers, anybody. I didn't know. I just started doing it. And, and I had an incredible miracle happen. But it was a direct response to a specific word that God spoke to me. Now, I realize that word is true no matter who reads it. But there are times when the Holy Spirit will speak a specific word. He'll sow a word to you. Uh, Peter Daniels told me that after he got saved, he, he said, I want to find out how much money it is possible for one man to give away in his lifetime. And once he got his fourth business going and he started making money, he gave away tens and tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars over the course of his life. But the Holy Spirit will tell you, like he told me one time, right now, stop what you're doing. Call the CEO, Kent Humphreys of Fellowship of Companies for Christ International. He's gone on to be with Jesus now. He told me to call him right then and there. And I did. People have been telling me to reach out to that man for a year, but I hadn't until the Holy Spirit said so. And when I did, it opened up a huge opportunity for me. So... There's times when the Lord will give you a specific word. Secondly, that word is planted like the seed is planted in the soil. And you have to receive and believe it in your heart. And sometimes your heart is hard. And so what you have to do is soften it. How do you soften it? Well, you praise the Lord. You develop thankfulness, gratitude, and you, you cultivate, you praise the Lord. And it begins to loosen up the earth a little, break up the fallow ground, and you receive the word of God. I know I'm going fast. You have to study this out on your own or read the book. It's in the book. Uh, third thing in nutrients. What are the nutrients? Well, there's two types, organic and inorganic, but the organic type for now is, is like a tree. It dies and, and, and it begins to decay and, and all that, all the nutrients in that tree begin to go into the earth and be absorbed. And, 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 and the Bible calls you and me trees of righteousness. And so what this really is, is the testimony of others, because you see, when you're up against a challenge, not only do you need a specific word from God, not only do you need to be able to receive it in your heart, but sometimes you need the testimony of others to, that will encourage you. You say, if he can do it for him, if God can do it for him, he can do it for me. So that's important. Fourth thing is water. Water, of course, is the word of God. The Bible makes that very clear in Ephesians 5 and other places. It talks about the washing of the water, the word, but it is also the, up, the bursting forth of the spirit, rivers of living water coming out of us, and it's the fellowship of the spirit. So you need to, if you want to really begin say, how do I get my financial miracle? I got to say, get a seed from the Lord. What is that word that you want me to do? What is the action you want me to take? What is that thing? He will give you favor, but he will speak a word to you. You let that be planted in the soil of your heart. You cover it with the nutrients. You <clears throat> water it. <clears throat> and then CO2. You see CO2, again, I don't have the time to get into this, but it, I guarantee this. It represents the problems in your life. 
CO2 is the problem. So everybody's all afraid about CO2. Well, CO2 is, is, is happy food for trees. When the levels were higher, it needs to be like six times higher than they are now. Trees were growing so fast and, and fruit was so big and everything was so wonderful. They love CO2, but there are problems to mankind. You know, if we didn't have trees, we'd be in trouble. And so part of the solution is I got to find a, a, a problem to solve because that's where my provision is. I told you about the book, The Bible Incorporated. After we did our first print run of 25,000 copies and we sold out in eight months, I ordered another 25,000 copies. And this time I had some people prepay it, you know, like in, in an order. And one of them was a ministry that ordered 5,000 copies. And the day it was going to press, I called them and said, hey, I still don't have your check. I need the check. <laughs> and they said, well, we've had a spending freeze. And I'm, I'm sorry, Michael, but we, 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 can't, we can't do that right now. Well, they just took away my ability to pay for my order when it came due. It was an existential threat to my little struggling, fledgling little business. It was a problem. It was a big problem. But I knew something. I knew that every problem has an equal or greater opportunity. Problems and adversities are joined at the hip. I knew this was a big problem, which meant there was a big opportunity. And I was going to find it. And I got on my knees and I prayed and I said, Lord, 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 this is a big problem. It can end us. What is the solution? What is the, what, what is the opportunity? And he told me. And the whole opportunity was instead of ordering another 25,000 leather bound books, I ordered 5,000 leather bound and 20,000. Paperback. So they printed 25,000 books. 5,000 were in leather. The other were in paperback. And guess what? Because paperback were for far less. Far less. The leather books with the brass corners and the gilded edges and all that and sewn together. They're very expensive. The, the paperback, not so much. And, and <clears throat> the paperback sold hundreds of thousands of copies by itself. It became our best-selling book ever. Problems are your provision. Then you need light. Light is energy. You know, you got solar power everywhere, right? It, it, it's energy. And it, it's it's really faith, if you will. And Jesus said, it is your faith that has made you well. Not mine, it's your faith that made you well. So trees use the power of light or the power of faith to convert CO2 or problems and water, the word or information, combine it with that into, and they turn it into sugar, which is provision. And ultimately it produces wood, leaves, fruit, whatever it is you need in your life. And so light is the, the element of faith in action. And lastly is warmth, which is, it is. It is passion. It is intensity. It is zeal. It, you know, Jesus said, and the scripture says, actually, <clears throat> seek the Lord with all of your heart. When you seek him with all of your heart, you will find him. Not when you do it half-heartedly, not when you're just casually walking down the street. As, as I said earlier, I learned it from Judy. She shared this with me that her pastor from before I knew her said, God seldom answers the casual inquiry. This, th there's a passion that's involved here, an intensity. And when you put those seven things together, my friend, you will have the answer that you need. You'll have it every single time. Now, I can't get into this, but those same seven elements relate to business. You can see them there on the screen. I can't walk you through them right now, but they're very powerful for business as well. And then the rainforest. You see what happened was in 2005, I think it was, I was sitting on my sofa, minding my own business, praying, seeking God, listening to him. And he said, hey, Michael, not quite like that, but he said, how would you like to go down to Panama, the country? I said, you mean a third world country? You want me to go to Panama? What for? He said, well, I want to teach you something about finance, the realm of finances. I said, huh? So I went. Two weeks later, I'm on a plane to Panama. I don't know why. I don't know where I'm going. I get down there, and there's another divine spark waiting for me. I'm walking from my room to the place where they serve breakfast. I'm in a place called Boquete in the country of Panama in the mountains. And the Lord spoke to me. I wasn't asking him anything. He just spoke to me. And he said, everything you need to learn about business, you can learn in the rainforest. Can you imagine? I went to the front desk. I said, are they having a business seminar in the rainforest? And, and you know, God's laughing. He said, that's not what I meant, Michael. That's not what I meant. And, and I, I, I found out that, you know, Romans 1.20 talks about the hidden things of God. Uh, Solomon, the wisest man, the richest man that ever lived, said that in 1 Kings 4.33 that he spoke about trees. From the cedars that were in Lebanon to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. And the kings of all the earth sent their men to listen to him, to his wisdom, because they wanted to know what he knew about trees. Because it wasn't how to prune a pear tree. It was the secrets of the universe wrapped up into things God made, and he was an expert at it. So I began to seek that. I went multiple times to the rainforest there 
I'm with this on the private grounds of the Smithsonian World Headquarters for Tropical Research on Barrow, Colorado Island in the Panama Canal in front of one of the trees. They're kind of big there, as you can see, taking notes and listening to the private uh, scientist that was assigned to a group of us uh, to explain a lot of things in the rainforest. And I discovered things like the Brazil nut effect, how to get anything you need in life without using money. Isn't that pretty cool? Because in the rainforest, guess what? When a monkey wants a banana, he doesn't go to the banana tree and drop a quarter at the bottom and go get a banana. It doesn't work like that. They don't use currency. They have a far more effective system. I found out how to do that. I acquired $360,000 worth of ad space in a national business magazine by simply copying the lesson of the Brazil nut effect by trading value for value. Full page ad in Success Magazine for a year. Was the, was the deal. No cash required. I wrote a book, originally titled it Seven Wealth Seekers of the Rainforest. The publisher changed it because I didn't self-publish that one to Rainforest Strategy. Zig Ziglar wrote the forward. Mark Victor Hansen from the Chicken Soup Guys gave me a great endorsement. It's a wonderful book. And by the way, I'm going to give that to everyone tonight. Mail it out to you for free to anybody who spends the extra dollar. When you order the books, you spend an extra dollar and join the school I will send you a copy of that. Now, if you're living outside the United States, I'm sorry, you're only going to get the digital because it's very, very expensive to mail it internationally. But either way, you'll get the book. Now, listen carefully. The Bible compares us to trees. Uh, my wife, one of her verses that she's said to me many times is Isaiah 61, 3, and it says, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. He's talking about us, you oaks or trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord for the display of his glory, the display of his splendor. That's us. Psalm 1. Psalm 1 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night, and he will be like a tree. He will be, you will be like a tree, like a tree planted by the river. What does that mean? What does it mean to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water <coughs> that brings forth its fruit in its season? Don't you want to bring forth fruit in your season? Whose leaf also shall not wither. Jeremiah 17 quotes it slightly differently. And he says that even in the, you know, the hottest heat in the drought, you will not wither. And, and then it says, and whatever he does will prosper, will prosper. So what is your responsibility, my friends? Do you know what it is? I just gave you a couple of verses. We are trees of righteous. Your responsibility, your work, the work that God has given you. This is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees in, in John 6, 29. He says, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. The one he has sent is Jesus. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the, as of the only begotten of the Father. That one. He is the word. Same was in the beginning with God. He same was God. That is him. And, and, and our job is to believe him, believe what he says. That's the work. Now, the, those things and many others are in the book, the third book of the series. I call it from the forest to the tree. It's like I, I've talked, the rainforest strategies about the forest. This is about the secrets of the tree. And there are seven success indicators. For startups that you should know about, four indicators for picking the right market to go into, how to turn problems into provisions, seven roles every business must fill, seven success habits of trees, and you know probably 25 other chapters I can't put, put on here. That's part of what you'll get when you get the books. I strongly, strongly encourage you to get them. Um, then there's another thing. This other thing is beautiful. It's called God's Universal Laws because it says in 2 Corinthians, get this, for the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Did you know there are things, things, things that are not seen? Things that are not seen. Oh, my God. Do you know what's inside that statement? George Washington Carver, one of my heroes, knew exactly what was inside that statement. He had a conversation with God one day. He was known as the peanut man. And he said, <clears throat> he asked the Lord to show him the secrets of the peanut. And he says, the creator said, I have given you three laws namely compatibility, temperature, and pressure. All you have to do is take these constituents and put them together, observing these laws, and I will show you why I made the peanut. See, what he did is he took the peanut and he broke it down into fats and waters and acids and different elements, 10 different elements, and then he used those three laws and came up with the different combinations that yielded over 300 different products that were new to the, to the world and very useful. Oh, later in life, he said that he used his knowledge to increase the crop yields of sweet potatoes on a half acre farm from 40 bushels for a half acre to 266 bushels from the same half acre. 
Friends, that's almost seven times. That's multiplication. He used the wisdom that God showed him. And I'm telling you, I could spend all night just talking to you about this man, but I don't have the time for that. But it's multiplication. And I want you to understand multiplication is so much better than fractionalization. And you can do that. And I want to help you. So these same laws when applied to business can have similar increases for you. Now, the, they were, the you know, I call them the universal laws of business. The three that he talked about were the law of compatibility, the law of temperature, and the law of pressure. I can't open those up for you now, but I will tell you this. If you join the school of business for a dollar when you buy the books, last Thursday, just what, four days ago, uh, my wife and I were up in North Carolina on vacation, but I didn't want to miss because we had the Jesus School. We do a live meeting once a month on the, on the, on the monthly membership. We do a live meeting. And on that live meeting, I unpack the first of these, the first three of these 10 secrets from the universal laws, the things that you cannot see. I unpack them. If you join, you'll be able to go back and catch them and catch that lesson and find out what those things are and what the, the, the what it means for business. Because listen carefully. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> Gosh, I, these are laws. These aren't guidelines. These aren't principles. These aren't suggestions. These aren't ideas. These aren't, you know, somebody's, you know, imagination. These are laws, which means they always work. So what you need to do, what I need to do, what we need to do is to say, this is a law. How do I cooperate with that law? Because when I cooperate with that law, I am guaranteed success. And so I went and started studying the top 25 laws uh, known to mankind since they were discovered in the order of their discovery. And we went back to the, the, the first law. It was actually the law of the lever by Archimedes in 300 BC. And I came forward and I picked the top 10 that I could find for business. And there are things like the law of the lever, law of gravitation, that's Newton's law of gravitation, the law of inertia, acceleration, action, reaction, the law of entropy, thermodynamics. And you think, well, you may have heard of those things, but have you ever understood what they mean for business? They're absolutely profound when you take the elements and you say, okay, what, what fills the role of weight in business? Oh, that's interesting. What fills the role or equals the same as motion or acceleration and so on? And you start to put all that together, and it is absolutely profound. And when you cooperate with these laws, you're going to love it. Our next monthly meeting, by the way, is we always meet on the second Thursday of the month. Uh, we have a weekly mastermind as well. We meet every Friday. But uh, the, the monthly thing is once a month, and it's the second Thursday we meet, and we, we're going to be, going to be continuing this uh, in August. Now, I also promised on the website that uh, on the landing page that I was going to tell you about Solomon's top five secrets for wealth creation. Well, oh, my gosh, this. These are five chapters in a book. I'm not even going to make five slides out of them because it's too rich, too deep, too important, too profound. And it'll take me all night long. And I would desperately want to tell you, but I'm not going to. And I know I'm talking fast. And if you want to, when we send you the link, play it at three quarter speed, play it at half speed, whatever you got to do. And you can hear it more slowly if you want to. But I'm trying to get as much in for you as I possibly can. Because God put love in my heart for you guys. And I want you to get this. Now, he says here, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 9.11, he says, the race is not to the swift, nor battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. And I thought, what in the world are we talking about? Well, let me tell you something. There's, there's a dividing line here. It's after the word, but. But time and chance. Time and chance is not the real translation. It's not even a word. What's written there is a symbol. It's the first and last letter of the alphabet, Aleph Tav. The Aleph Tav it's like A to Z, you know, the last first and last letter of the alphabet in the Hebrew alphabet appear some 10,000 times in the Old Testament, but they're translated less than 200 times because it's not meant to be translated. It, it, it refers to the divinely orchestrated appearance or, or intervention of God Almighty, of Jesus, because Jesus said in Revelation 1 and other places in the book of Revelation, he referred to himself as I am the Alpha and Omega, except for he probably spoke it in Hebrew, he would have said I am the Aleph Tav, beginning and the end, the first and the last. And, and, and what it's saying is, what Solomon is saying is these five things, speed and strength and, and wisdom and understanding and skill are super important. But when the Aleph Tov, when the Jesus shows up like he did to Jericho and spoke to Joshua and Joshua said, oh, we, we, we bow to you. You know, when he, when he shows up, that trumps, it beats everything. It doesn't mean that speed and strength and wisdom and understanding are not important. They are. But there is another advantage. I don't have time to talk to you about the other advantage. I promised you these five. And so I'll just say this in summary. Speed is important in business. That's why Amazon is doing so well, because you can go on and very quickly and very simply make an order and have your products to you sometimes the same day, sometimes within a couple hours. 
depending on what it is, speed is important. And the, the quicker you can get somebody the desired result, the more they're willing to pay. You can buy a book on weight loss and, you know, and, and I don't know, eat, eat grapefruit for a month or six months or whatever it is and lose eight pounds. Or you can go to the to the doctor and get liposuction and in an afternoon with a vacuum cleaner or however they do it, suck all the fat out of you and you lose, you know, 50 pounds in two hours. It's going to cost you a lot more. Uh, but, you know, and that's the point I'm trying to make in a crude kind of way is that speed is important. It's rewarded the marketplace. So how can you bring speed of solution without compromising quality? That's one of the wealth secrets that Solomon has. Strength is another one. What's your unique strength? How are you different from other people? How do you define that? How can people recognize that? Strength is important. Third one is wisdom. Wisdom is logic. It's the rationale. It's the left side of the brain. It's it's the justification. It's the, it's the supreme thing. And, and, and wisdom will, will, will get you provision. But riches, <laughs> they come to men of understanding because understanding deals with the heart. Understanding unlocks the power, the drive, the want to. It unleashes that in people. And if you can get that unlocked, that will bring you riches. And in favor to men of skill because skill is so important. It doesn't matter how emotional or how wise or how strong or how how swift you are, if you're not competent, you're not going to do well in business. And skill is important. And skill means the intimate knowledge. It's the word yada. It means to intimately know God. It's the intimate level of knowing of your, of your craft. And when you get to that level, you will do well. Those are the five big secrets that Solomon has. And they are in-depth in five different chapters in the book, of God's Best Kept Secrets, number three. Uh, I also talk about inside that book, the seven laws of multiplication, the top 10 reasons people fail in business, how timing. Trump's absolutely everything. That's the Aleph Tov. How the, the 17 high-end service strategies, and again, it's got you know 25, 30 chapters in it, whatever it is. Uh, it's full of these kinds of things. That's book number three. Now, I have got a question for you. I, I, I want to share something with you. And this is heavy duty. This is, this is sobering. So if your mind wandered, if somehow you look at Facebook, please shut that down. I want to help you. So you got to pay attention to this. There are three questions that God asked in the very beginning of the book of Genesis. These are the first three questions in the Bible. It's the law of first mentions. When does God ask a question? What did he ask? And it's really important. And the first question he said when he you know, came to Adam after Adam had done what he'd done, he said, Adam, question number one, where are you? Adam, where are you? Now think about this, friends. Where are you? It's, it, this is the whole idea of taking stock of where are you now? <clears throat> um, how long have you had that dream that's inside you? Wh are you where you thought you'd be five, five years ago when you're looking ahead? Are you there now? If you're not, Take stock. Maybe you're ahead of a game. I don't know, but it's important to say, where are you now? And have an honest assessment. Here's where we are. I really hope to be further along, but I'm not. And, and have an assessment about that. And speaking of assessment, how does God assess? <laughs> Glad you asked. It's in John 16, verse 8. Jesus speaking of the Holy Spirit, he says, and when he, the Holy Spirit has come, <laughs> he will convict or convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Three things. Three things. So this has everything to do with you and your life and business. Now, I know it's talking about salvation and coming to know Jesus and all that. I understand that. But it's also very applicable to business and to your life. You see, it's going to convict you of sin. Sin means to fall short, to not hit the target. You miss the target. So the question you need to ask yourself is, am I hitting the target? Have I hit the target? Am I falling short? That's the first question the Holy Spirit is going to bring to mind is to convict people of you are falling short of the mark. And then of righteousness. Righteousness, the Bible says in Isaiah 64, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. In other words, the best I can do in terms of, you know, walking old ladies across the street or, or reading my Bible 16 times a day or, or whatever works or tithing or giving, whatever all that stuff is, no matter how good I can be, it is not good enough. It's the blood of Jesus that leads me to sell it brings salvation or cleanses me. So in business, you need to ask, ask not only or of yourself, are you falling short? But what are you counting on to bridge the gap? Is it your good works? Is it like, oh, I know, I know I've, I've not done well, but I, I, I got this new network marketing thing, or I've got this new, uh, this new, whatever it is. And I think this is the one, this is going to get it for me. And you know what? I don't know. Maybe it is the one. I don't know. But you have to ask for yourself, is it the thing is it really going to bridge the gap? Are you counting on the thing that is the equivalent of filthy rags, the equivalent of insufficient? And if so, he's going to, the of judgment part. It's like, in other words, there's a price to pay. Because if you're counting on something that's not going to work, you're going to have a price to pay. Now, in, in reality, in business, what will be the result if you don't find a way to bridge the gap? And what will that look like? And those are questions you have to ask yourself. I can't ask them for you. And the reason why so many people miss their targets 
is one big ginormous thing. It's the lack of knowledge. I failed in business a few times because I had no idea what I didn't know. It's painful. It took me, I don't forget how many tests, third, fourth attempt before I had a business that was successful and I could sell it for a good amount of money. But lack of knowledge can be very, very painful. And it says in the scripture, my people, Hosea says this, are destroyed. They cease, they, 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 they give up in other words. They're undone, they're silenced for lack of knowledge. And that needn't be the case. Which brings me to question number two. God then says, now listen to this. This, this is very deep here. He says, Adam, because Adam said, I'm naked. You know, he said, where are you? Well, I hid, Lord, I, I'm naked. And that, God says, question number two, he said, Adam, who, who told you you were naked? In other words, who have you been listening to? Who have you been listening to? Is it one of the many new age gurus? who seem to have it all together? Is it a Scientologist? Maybe who, who is it that you're listening to? David said in Psalms, he said, I was envious. Oh, I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. But when I thought how to understand it, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. And then I understood their end. Who told you you were naked? Who have you been listening to you see in the bible knowledge is compared to water beautiful water mountain springs i could drink from that water swim in that water love that water it's beautiful but you see there's another source of water <clears throat> it's the mississippi river that's a figure of speech but there it is a picture of it that water looks pretty nasty to me it's easily accessible. You don't have to go up in the mountains. There it is right there. And the thing about the Mississippi River is the water, if you were to pour it over your head, it feels just as cool as the clean water. The difference is there's a little bit of sediment, a little bit of strychnine, a little bit of poison, a little bit of toxin in it. There's the two glasses of water. Which one would you rather drink from? The one on the left, uh, James talks about, is the earthly, sensual, demonic wisdom. The one on the right is wisdom that is from above, first of all, pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of fruits and good mercy, and mercy <clears throat> without hypocrisy and completely sincere. I want to drink out of the glass on the right. That's the, that's the wisdom that is from above. Where have you been drinking from? I see, here's the problem. I see a lot of Christians get sucked into this. They say, this guy's making so much money. I got to listen to him. He's, he's, he's successful. Yeah, and, and maybe he is. But, and, and maybe it's 99% water, but do you really want to drink that? Well, they say, well, I wanna, I, I'm going to eat the steak and spit out the bones. Well, you know what? It's not a steak. It's water. It's information. The Bible compares that to water. It's hard to spit out the toxins. And then God says, Adam, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat of? In other words, did you not follow my instructions? What have you tried so far to bridge the gap? Is it Amazon? Is it eBay? Your cell phone, a secret sales funnel, maybe uh, a webinar, a challenge. You know, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And I'm not saying those things are necessarily wrong. It might be the right thing for you. Maybe it's the right thing, but done the wrong way. Maybe. <laughs> maybe it's just the wrong thing. I don't know what you've tried. That's for you to assess. But I want to drive you back to the word of God. Proverbs 13, 13 says, Whoever despises the word and counsel of God brings destruction upon himself, but he who fervently fears and respects the commandment of God is rewarded. And the interesting thing about that, you might think, well, I don't despise the word of God, but the word despise there in the Hebrew is holds as insignificant. Whoever holds as insignificant. In other words, you know, I don't put a lot of importance on the Bible. And what's that got to do with the price of tomatoes in Japan in February? I don't understand this. I, I'm going to go to this big guy. Or this guy, he's got his own jet, you know, he's really rich. I, I, he, he really knows his stuff. I'm going to listen to him. Have at it. Whoever despises or holds us insignificant, insignificant, the word of counsel, a word in counsel of God brings destruction upon himself. I recommend you don't do that. What will happen, for example, in the man in this picture, if he doesn't change course as he's heading over a bridge that's been washed out by a storm? I think you know. What do you think will happen if you continue on your present trajectory? I don't know what your present trajectory is. But you need to think through that. If I keep on doing what I've been doing and going down this path, where will I be and when will I get there? And is it where I want to be? I want to encourage you and direct you to the word, which is what it says in Joshua 1, this book of the law, 
will not depart from your mouth, <clears throat> but you shall meditate in a day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I can't find a better source than that. So that's what I'm sticking with. And when I talk to you about God's best kept secrets, this four volume series, it is, it is biblically derived. It's not biblically compatible. It's not like I took something from the world and dunked it in a river and got a Bible verse and called it Christian. I didn't do that. It's not like that. The only book I haven't told you about yet is book number one. It's called Taking Back the Gates. That's because the gates in the Bible represent the political, judicial, and financial centers of power and influence. And guess what? They've been captured. But the promise, the promise, the promise that God gave in, in, in Genesis chapter 12 to Abram, he said, in blessing, I will bless you, and in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. And, and your seed, <laughs> your seed will possess the gate of his enemies. Wow, the seed of Abraham is going to possess the gate. What does that mean? It's going to possess the centers of power, of influence, of the political, ju judicial, <clears throat> And, and financial centers, How, how's that going to happen? Well, <clears throat> Paul said in Galatians 3, <clears throat> he said, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. That's pretty powerful. And heirs according to the promise. So I want you to get the books. They're, you can buy them on Amazon tomorrow, anytime you want. It doesn't matter. They're $99.70. You can get all four books sent to you by me. You can either get them digitally for $69.97. You can get them the physical version for $79.97 plus shipping, or you can get both versions for an extra 10 bucks, 89.97. Probably the best. I don't know if you're like me. I like the digital because I want to have it on my computer sometimes, but I like the physical. I like them in my bookcase. So I like having them to look at. Anyway, go to michaelpink.com slash join. But I promised you something else. You see, the, the substance of these things, you know, Zig Ziglar invited me to his place to teach some of his people what I knew. And he said, <clears throat> we asked Michael to present his biblically-based sales training program to about 2,000 people they had in their school, their online thing. He said, not only was it one of the highest response rates ever, he said, but the content was so impacting, our chat rooms filled up quickly and remained full for the duration of the event. Zig Ziglar was one of my heroes. Back in the 70s, I read his book, See You at the Top. I was given that book to read in the 70s. Then in, uh, whenever this is, I have to think through the year, but in the early 2000s sometime, uh, he wrote the forward to my Rainforest book. And when he did, I, I was in his office and I said, I read your book back in the 70s. I never thought for a minute I would actually see you at the top and be sharing that platform, speaking on stages with thousands and thousands of people with you, sir. What a great man he was to me. I've always enjoyed him. Then there's Peter Daniels who said, I cannot think of another self-help book that equals it. It's so packed with insight that I read it twice to absorb the content and I recommend it without reservation. Peter J. Daniels was the illiterate bricklayer who got saved in 1929, excuse me, when he was 29 years old in 1959. <laughs> and he's in his 90s now and he was a bricklayer but he taught himself to read and write and earned five honorary doctorates three ambassadorships became fabulously wealthy uh norman vincent peel called him the the greatest platform speaker in the world he ate books five thousand biographies and many many other books on motivation success all that so when he says i can't think of another one that equals it that's was really meaningful to me west Cantrell, i was just on one of the streets named after his company yeah, uh, yesterday, when we were driving through Atlanta, he was the CEO of Lanier Worldwide. And he said the techniques that Michael outlines will help make any product successful and should even be considered during the development process irresistible. So I think you're going to like the books, okay? I, I just, you, I don't think you're going to go wrong with that. But I said something I wanted to do for you the Jesus School of Business. Because Jesus said of himself, he said, a greater, listen to this, a greater than Solomon is here. That's Jesus speaking. So for $1 more, you can have a 30-day membership in the Jesus School of Business at the monthly mentor level. So this is the Jesus School of Business. And there are dozens and dozens of courses. I mentioned Peter Daniels' library. His library is in here. So, for example, if you click on his library, these are books that he's written, some of the best books I know of on the subjects he's written. And when you spend a dollar to join the school, you have access to all of those books, plus a lot more. You have access to uh, the mastery program. There, there's hundreds of videos in there. Uh, the previous recordings of the Jesus School. Um, the Seven Well Seekers of the Rainforest. The Genesis Business Model. There are so many incredible things here. Uh, courses that are in here. Um, <clears throat> like the deep dive on the Moses questioning strategy. You saw me talk about that uh, you know, earlier on a few minutes ago. Well, there's all these videos and lessons that are in here. And when you click on a course and you open it up, you're going to find out, oh, there's what Michael's talking about. There's the model and the questioning strategy and all those goodies are in there. And I'm telling you right now that there are hundreds and hundreds of videos 
that are just like the kind of thing that I've shown you. And you can load more. And we're always adding to this. So this is the Jesus School of Business that's there. And there's all kinds of stuff there I think you would get a lot out of. Now, the, the various courses that are in there, they have an immense value. The retail price, forget the value, the retail price of these, uh, if you add them all, there's different courses. Some of them, like the business courses, there's four of them with 34 lessons. Sales courses, there's a dozen of them with th almost, well, 229 lessons. We've got all these different courses, all these different prices that are there, which you can buy them individually anytime you want. But the total value is nearly $6,000. That's the total retail price, not the value. The value is 100 times that. But there it is, roughly $6,000 of materials that's inside the school. And you can have access to any of that and all of that for $1 for your first month. So here's the mentor level. Here's how it works. For just $1 a month with your purchase, when you buy the books, you, there'll be an option. Yeah, I want, to, I want the books and I'll spend the extra dollar to try this thing out for a month. And it'll give you full access to the Jesus School curriculum. It'll give you the monthly live group coaching. We have a call once a month. It's live. And you can ask questions. We have a great time on that call. We just did one last Thursday. The next one's in, in August. You, you love that. You have access to all the previous recordings, 30 days to explore it. You can cancel anytime, whether it's 28 days from now, 29 days from now, or two and a half months from now. You can cancel anytime you want. There's no contract. Here's how this works. Uh, the, we, if you were on my website before, if you know who I am, you, you may have seen it when we were offering it for $59 a month. It was for the first 200 seats. They're long gone. That is sold out. The next group is the Builders Club. That's from 200 to 1,000 seats. That won't be going away anytime real soon. We're going to try to have that filled up by the end of September. So there's no rush or pressure to get into it tonight, but that's the Builders Club. And then after that's over, it'll be the Growth Club for the 1,000 to 5,000 seats, and that'll be 147 a month. So <clears throat> right now we're in this one, the Builders Club, and we're filling that up. We're going to start doing a lot of advertising uh, later this month and into next month, and we hope to have that filled up pretty soon. But it won't be, you know, this week. So I want you to know. But that's a good place to go for the mentor level. Now I said to you, there is a weekly mastermind. Several people say, you know what? I got a business. I need. I want to have access to you a lot more often. Let's get together on the weekly basis, and we do that. And I'll start off by personally doing a thirty to sixty minute call with you to get a handle on your goals, your current business, what's going on in your world, and kind of get you grounded and set up in a certain way. Then we're going to have the weekly coaching calls where you bring your questions, your deals, your proposals. You get my input. You say, take a look at my, my website, my landing page, my sales letter, whatever it is. They last a minimum of an hour. They've never been that short, but they, they, they're at least an hour. And they can extend longer based on your specific needs. I stay on us for as long as anybody wants me to. I'm there to help you, to serve you. My clients used to pay me no less than 5000 a month to do this. I had people pay me 15000 a month and not have a call once a week. So this, this is really, really high value. You get also with the weekly mentorship uh, mastermind program, you get... <clears throat> Uh, unlimited email support. And some people email me all kinds of questions. Well, Michael, can you take a look at this? And what do you think of that? And on and on and on. That's what I do. And sometimes I answer it right away. Sometimes I make it an object lesson. I teach it in the next class. We meet, like I say, every week. The mastermind level. It's got everything that's in the mentor level. Plus, it's got the weekly. This is very important. The weekly live group uh, coaching. It's a much smaller group. It's a mini mastermind. We help each other. Small enough that we can do that. Um, unlimited email access, access to over 150 hours of previously recorded sessions. See, we got like over 150 hours of previously weekly recorded sessions that are in a private Facebook group that once you become a member, you can join the group and uh, you can have access to hundreds of hours of former stuff that was really, really uh, groundbreaking. The Founders Club for that, when we originally started, was 147 a month or 14.95 a year. That sold out a long time ago. Uh, <clears throat> the next one is the Builders Club, which is for 20 to 50 uh, seats, that's 247 a month or 24.95 a year. That's filling up, but it's not gone yet. So it's not like there's some pressure thing to do it tonight, but it's there. And then when we hit that number of 50, we're going to go to the 495 a month and 49.50 a year. Now you may not know this, but I'm going to tell you because some people do know this. When they ask me how much is your program, and I tell them I'm always embarrassed. Like you only charge 247 a month, must not be very good. Ask anybody in my program. They've been in it for years. It's very good. I just wanted to make it accessible. Now, it's like I say, it's filling up. That's the mastermind level. But I want to tell you, if anybody says, oh, I want to do this in the next you know, week, let's say six days, actually, uh, there's a few bonuses. My friend Eric Beck has done a flagship assessment of businesses. 
how you can actually do an assessment of your business, the 12, 12 key areas. He charges almost $200 for this course, for this assessment. If you've ever done assessments, you know they can be expensive. He's let me do it and give it to you for free if, if you join the Jesus School of Business in the next six days. That's not a rush. It's just six days should be able to make up your mind by then. Secondly, there is a, he gives another bonus called eliminating time debt because we get under such pressure. Oh, I got all this stuff to do. He tells you how to eliminate time debt. He sells that for $195. That's also included when you join in the next six days. Bonus number three, I said to you, if you sign up for the Jesus School and spend that extra whopping $1, you're going to get a physical copy of Rainforest Strategy sent to you if you're in the U.S. or you have a U.S. shipping address. Outside the U.S., we'll send you a digital copy. Bonus number four is a digital copy of Selling Among Wolves. It's called by some the Bible for, for uh, sales, the Christian sales manual period. It is full of biblical content, biblical strategies, biblical ways, all kinds of stuff you, that I didn't get a chance to tell you about. You know, the, the motor se motivational secrets of the Ten Commandments, how to win the battle for the heart based on the Canaanite Congress, how to build a climate of trust based on the life of Christ is summed up by Paul in the, in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. I mean, there's so much stuff there. It's amazing. All these bonuses are included. So in closing, your membership options, you can A, just get the books, and I would love to have you get those. That's a minimum I would tell you right now. If you're on this call and you haven't got them and you had this interest, I strongly urge you to at least do that. But I would also say if you want to, I would encourage you to consider the mentor level for just $1 for the first month or the mastermind level. And the mastermind level is $247 a month or $24.95 a year. When you pay the annual, you end up saving like $500 on the mastermind or a couple hundred bucks on the um, mentor level. But that's up to you. Go to michaelpink.com slash join if you want to get it. And as I promised, if you want the Bible Incorporated, I will email you a link where you can download it. Just if you're on here to the end, we'll know who's on here. We will make sure you get a link to that book sent out to you very, very shortly. Here's something that we do as humans, as people. We put we erect certain barriers to keep ourselves from doing what we need to do what's in our best interest. For example. I don't know. I, of all the clients I've had over the years, I mean, I've seen two people that I prayed for in my client's office. They were in their employ. They weren't in the office when this happened. That were hours away from death. And I was asked to urgently pray for them. The doctors are given a hope and they will be dead before the sun goes down tonight. interceded for them and saw them come out of their coma, wake up, tell jokes, and ask to get out of the hospital twice. In the work environment, we are to be a testimony and a witness for Jesus Christ and to hear him. But I want to tell you, every company that I can think of that I ever did any help for got help. Big time. Somebody called me one time. He said, now, listen, Carl, I don't know if this applies to you or not, but it might apply to somebody else. Called me up from Texas, Plano, Texas. And he said, Michael, we're, we're in a really bad way here, but I need some help. And I know you're a Christian. Can you help me? And I didn't have the school at the time. I didn't have the mentorship. I didn't have the mastermind program. I just did a, I did a three day, you know, multi-thousand dollar consult. And, and, and that was, you know, on site. And that was how I got the thing going. And, and <clears throat> so he's telling me his problem. And, and and he heard the, the, the price tag and he had a sticker shock and he was like, that's going to take everything I have. He said, will it help me? Will it help me? And I said, well, let me ask you a question. This is a true story. He said, are you married? He said, yep. You got kids? Yeah, they're grown. Great. Do you have grandkids? Said, oh, yeah. Do you love your grandkids? Oh, very much so. One's two, one's five. I take them fishing. We love it. Oh, man, they're my, they're my joy. They're my everything. I said, great. Let me ask you a question then, sir. If you got a call today that those two grandchildren that you love were kidnapped and being held for ransom, and you had 30 days in which to meet the ransom demands, and the ransom demand was you either turn this company around in 30 days or you'll never see your grandchildren alive again. Would you, A, start making plans for the funeral, or B, turn the company around? Ha, turn the company around. 
I said, well, then, yes, I can help you. When do you want me to come? Went out there. Do you have any experience in my industry? Battery conservation technologies? No, that doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Flew out to Plano, Texas. Did my thing with him for three days. Came back. I don't know the time frame now. I have to guess a year, two years later, something like that. He called me ecstatic. The company had turned around, made a big fat profit, and he sold it for millions of dollars and was moving to Florida to retire. And he wanted to thank me. The thing that we put in front of us many times is we say that the, the first shield that we put over ourselves is what we call circumstantial things. And the, top, the two common circumstances that we use as a defense are, I don't have the time to do this, or I don't have the money to do this. Now, when it comes to the money issue, most of the time, it's not a lack of resources. And I'm not even going to say it's a lack of faith, although that, that couldn't be, be in there. But in many times, it's simply a lack of resourcefulness. I told you, and I had the authority to make this offer, that I just inherited a parking lot, a car dealership, and they had three $100,000 Ferraris, but we needed to get rid of them, and I'm selling them for $5,000. Brand new. I got to get I got to get them out of here. My bet is there's not one of you that wouldn't find a way to get the $5,000 in the next 60 minutes. Okay, it's resourcefulness, but th this is the thing we have to be truthful. So, but, 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 do you believe? Here's a second thing. The second layer. I'll come back up to the first layer. The second layer is: Do you believe that what I've been teaching and what is in the Jesus School and what you've been hearing in the testimonies and the things I've been sending you for the last week? Do you believe that God's ways and God knows stuff about business and that it actually works? Do you think we're making this up, or do you believe? that God has a way for you to do that. If you do, then the question, the, the, the system or the process or what we're talking about or the school is not the problem. So you say, well, I don't have the money. And then I say, well, but if you were, if I was selling one ounce gold coins, which are maybe $2,000 today, but I'm selling them for 20 bucks a piece, but you got to buy, a, uh, you got to buy a hundred of them. Okay. Well, so you need to buy, you know, you need two grand. Would you, would you come up with it? Well, in a heartbeat, you would, you'd figure it out. So it's more about resourcefulness than resources. Second thing is time. And, and when it comes to time, and, and I've heard some people say, I don't know if I'm going to have time for this. Well, I, I understand that, but we all have the same amount of time. But here's, here's, what, here's a fact for you. It might blow your mind. It may not be true with you, certainly not with everybody, but maybe some of you. I don't know. But statistically across the board, the average adult spends two and a half hours a day on social media and five hours a day watching television. May not be your story, but it's not that you don't have room to add something to your schedule, which is busy, because it is busy. It's about prioritizing and say, I need to move certain things off my schedule to make room for this. But that's only worthwhile if you do two, if two things are true. If A, you believe this can help you, I could inundate you. It would take me a while, but I could inundate you with hundreds, if not thousands of testimonials. But if you believe that it works, then we get down to the third layer. The first layer is a circumstantial time and money. The second layer is, well, will the thing that you're offering, will it do it? Is, is it valid? If you don't think it's valid, you're on the wrong call. But the third thing, and this is the deepest level, and this is the gut, this is the part that hurts the most because it's so true. And it's not really that you don't have the time. It's not really that you don't have the money. It's not really that you don't think God's word works. It's because you don't think it'll work for you. Think, ah, he did that. He's special. Or it's just because of this or just because of that. I And there's a, there's a, a certain, if we're being honest, I've had it. It's like, oh, I believe, okay, I believe this, those testimonies are true, but I don't think it's going to work for me. And, and and that's the core. Like, will it work for me? And the answer is, Henry Ford kind of said it, really. If you believe it will or you believe it won't, you're absolutely right. He actually said, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're absolutely right. And 
So I say to you, I guarantee you, it will not work for you if you don't do it. And I also want to say this before going further. I'm not saying everybody should absolutely do this. I, I, I hear from people that say, you know, I just love the teaching. I, I'm not in business. I'm 82 years old. It's not my thing. But I just love you. I love what you take. I get that. I, and I love you. And I appreciate that. So I'm not in any way saying everybody should do this. Absolutely not. But if you need the help and you say, I'm not, I am struggling in this area and I want not only the promise and I want desperately to believe it, but I also want to have the principle, the strategy, the know-how, the tactics, the way, the truth, the life. I want that. You still have to. Buying it's not going to do it for you. If you're going to buy it, I suggest you, if you can, get the mastermind group because the greater your commitment to the program, the greater result you're going to get. But maybe that's not right for you. I, it's not for me to judge what's right for you. You tell, you figured that out, you and the Lord. It gets down to, do you think it will work for you? Do you think you can do this? And I'm going to tell you something. I had a man call me on a Friday. Twenty-five years ago. He was desperate. He was married, had children. He had been, a, I think, a school teacher or had some kind of government job, I forget what it was, and he'd been fired or somehow laid off or whatever it was. He was out of work and he got a job. The only job he could find was in sales. And to make matters worse, it was straight commission. And I think if I'm remembering it correctly, he'd been in it for a couple of months and he had run out of money and not made any sales or maybe made one sale or something like that. And he, he begged me, and I mean literally begged me over the phone. I didn't have the Jesus School of Business. I didn't have any of my books. I didn't have any of that kind of stuff. But he heard me on the radio, and he begged me to teach him right then and there over the phone what to do. Well, you know what? I love people. I've been so broke. You know, I, I know what that's like. I've slept in my car. I've slept in somebody else's couch for a month. I, when I used to have a beautiful custom-made home and a beautiful townhouse and a beautiful Lincoln and lost it all in my 20s. I know what it's like. My heart breaks for people like that. And maybe some of you are like that. I understand that. I'm calling you up to something. So with that man, I said, you know what? I'm going to teach you the most important thing I know to help you in your sales career. And I took him to, now where would you take him? If you were a sales instructor and you were trying to give somebody some quote unquote sales tips. I got to tell you what they'll tell you. There's a famous Scientologist out there who's got all this garbage sales stuff. They try to ram down your throat and try to ram people into it and close them and close them and force them and all that kind of stuff. All that nonsense. You don't have to do that. I took them to Philippians chapter two, verse five through eight. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I took them through the seven attributes of, of the life of Christ as Paul summarized them. Because Jesus asked us to trust him. God asked us to trust him. And we are betting the farm that if we put our trust in him, that that's the right choice. And we're going to be held accountable for the choice and the decision we make. So how did Jesus live and model his life that we would be inclined and even held accountable for our decisions to whether to trust him or not, not just for salvation, but also for your daily bread, but I digress a little bit. So I walked him through what it meant, the seven things. I, I'm not trying to tease you with them. It'd take me an hour to teach it. We don't have that time right now, but it's inside the Jesus School of Business. And I walked him through that. And then I prayed with him. And then I said goodbye. A week later, and, and in that, I told them my story about selling, making 22 presentations and getting 22 sales in my first 90 days. Unbeknownst to me, he thought, well, if Michael can do it, I guess I can do it. He called me a week later. He was beside himself. He said, Michael, I made eight presentations this week. I closed eight sales. I made more money this week than I've ever made in a month in my life. Now, it would be wrong of me to tell you that that's what you can expect. I, You know, because it, part of... The activation of this is dependent upon the opportunity. It's not how hard you row your boat as much as, as it is what boat you're in 
that you're rowing. It's not so much just how much faith you have and you speak and you believe. As that, that goes hand in hand with the opportunity that you're working in. So I can't promise you that, that you know, well, you go out, you'll, you'll do that. My friend Eric Beck heard me speak at a meeting. He got up and he made a presentation and he closed, I think he said 32 out of 35 sales. You know, like he, made, he, he got more in one 45 minute session than he had in his entire career since he started his own business. But if you don't believe the system, that's not going to work, but I think you do. I think you believe me. You wouldn't be here. It comes down to you believe it will work for you. And everybody has has that. Everybody's, is it worth spending $10,000 to learn this program? Will it work for me? I know it worked for that guy, but he, you know, he's handsome or he's tall or he's got a different, whatever it is. I don't have, I'm going to tell you something. You're looking at a man who had nothing going for me. I had no pedigree. I had a 12th grade education. And one, two, three mothers growing up. I've been dropped off at a doorstep when I was 11, dropped off at a doorstep when I was three. When I say dropped off, I mean as in, see you later. Hope, hope life works out for you. Ran away to live in the subways of Toronto at age 11. Got picked up by the police so that didn't happen. Taken to jail. Threatened to be beaten with a billy club unless I confessed everything to them, which I did because I believed them. I'm as ordinary as it gets. We have an extraordinary God. And I'm no favorite of his. But he loves me and he loves you. And I am absolutely convinced if you are in the need for and the desire to start a business, build a business, grow a business, improve your career, work a ministry, develop your ministry, do something to grow it, to get stable, if that is of interest to you. There's a lady. I don't know if she's on this call or not. She's from Britain. She joined the mastermind today. She wrote me an email. I was heartbroken. And then she joined. I didn't. I, I assume that she wouldn't because her story, but she she bet on this and she wanted to know, how do I start a business? I know I'm supposed to. And she said, God told me something about sheep and I'm supposed to do something, learn from the sheep. And I don't know what it means. And I haven't had a chance to tell her yet what it means. But you see the Genesis business model. On day one, God said, let there be light. Because light enables vision. Without vision, the people perish. They cast off restraint. You got to have vision. And day six, he made the sheep and the other animals. And there's a reason why he made them. And what they teach you. Because Job said that these animals are there to teach us. I've learned about sales from my dog. Judah teaches me stuff. You believe it? So, friends, if you are in a situation where you think, yeah, I, I, I want those kind of professional skills because I need them in my ministry. I need them in my business that I'm, I'm either in or starting or want to start or in my job because I, have, I interact with customers and I want to learn how to be more persuasive, more successful. If that is you, then don't hide behind, don't deprive yourself of the benefit by saying, you know, using the money thing or the time thing, because the money's come on, it's a dollar to join for the first month. I mean, I can't make it any cheaper than that, really. You know, you get the books. Um, so you can do it. I just don't want you to do it if you feel like, well, I don't have any way, I don't have anything to use it for. Well, then that's fine. But if you do, God had me do this. I wanted to do big clients and make big fat checks every month from these clients, which I used to do. It's easy. They love me. And the more they pay me, the clients that pay me $15,000 a month retainer wouldn't call me for two months. <laughs> but the calls they got $5,000 a month, which was my lowest end. Well, they call you like every week. Hey, what do we, can we do this? Can we do that? <laughs> but the more they paid, the less they asked of you. And um, I thought that's that I, I want to get back into that. That's really good. I like that. And uh, he said, no, I want you to make it available to people on this call 
that's not exactly what he said. He said, I want you to make it available to the masses. And so that's what I'm doing. So hopefully you know where to get it. If you have not had your questions answered about how to order, email me. Email Wally if it's a technical issue, wally at michaelpink.com. But if you're saying, can I do this or that? Because I had somebody on, on last week say, I've already got the books, but now I want to join the school for a dollar. Can I do that? Yes, you can. I'll send you a link. So if you have something like that and we haven't answered it tonight, you can email me at mpink at michaelpink.com. Because right now when I see a name on here, uh, for example, um, Judy, hopefully, I don't know if that's my Judy or another Judy, you know, um, but I see names. I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't necessarily have the email address handy here. So I see Sophie. I see Joseph. I'm, I'm looking. Oh, you're welcome. Digital is convenient, but physical is bookworm level. Yeah, come on, April. That's right. Uh, Will Mann, Michael shared with me for over two hours several years ago that helped me make a transition from a job to my business. He is such a blessing to me. I am not currently part of the school at this point. I don't know how to implement the principles of God's kingdom in my life. I work hard, but have not been able to make great strides in my business. Will, you're going to have to still, part of this, Will, is there is there is there is a work component to this and like for example well let me give you this example when i read numbers 13 verse 17 to 20 and it's where Moses gives instructions to the 12 spies to go to the promised land. He had seven questions he had to have answered. Most people aren't familiar with that passage. Those who are, will remember it. Those who do remember it, <clears throat> never applied it to sales unless they heard it from me. But I spent two to three days on my knees, on my belly, at my desk, in the office, saying, God, there's seven here. I know there's more. I know there's more to it. You got to show me. You got to show me what they're set. I know that's significant. Tell me, what is the implication? What is the application? And then I tested it. I had stunning, stunning results and put millions of dollars in people's pockets. So, you know, maybe the thing, and I don't know your exact circumstances, Will, so I appreciate the comment. But maybe, here, here's here's what I would say. If you say, I the, the optimal thing is join the mastermind, pay the $2,500. You're in for a year. You save 500 bucks. Some of you say, I, honestly, I can't do that. I got it. So maybe you want to do the payment, 247 You're in every week, and that's good for you. But some of you say, that's a bit of a stretch for me right now. And so you want to do the mentor program. That's $97 a month. The first month is a dollar. And that, that will give you access to hundreds of videos and lots of training. For still some, that may be more than you're able to stretch yourself for. And that's okay. You can start off by getting the books. Get the books. The you know if you go to michaelpink.com/slash/join, you can just choose to get the books at a savings. You can pay 100 bucks to Amazon, or you can pay 69.97 to me for the digital, or 79.97 for the physical plus shipping. So it, you know there are different levels, and I understand that people have different levels of faith, and I don't want anybody to be shamed or to feel less because that that's too big a stretch for them. If I I reached out for 10 copiers that, that month back in January of 86, or February of 86. But I didn't have it in me to go for 11. I had a threshold. I've taken financial risks that seemed big at the time, but now that's nothing. And so it doesn't do you good to go beyond what you can see. This is, jo this is Joshua 1.8. Meditate on the word that you may see so that you can do, so that you can prosper and be successful. So enter in at the level, Will, that makes the most sense for you. And I, I don't know your you know, personal circumstances, but I know that if all you did was get the books, and maybe you already have them, I don't know. But if all you did was get the books and read them and say, I'm going to apply this thing, you, you, there's so, there is so much gold in those books. I have a gentleman who just today joined the mastermind. He's a real estate mogul. He's a trainer's trainer. High profile kind of guy. He reached out to me when I was on vacation in North Carolina last week. And I said, hey, we'll talk when I get back. 
But he said, I bought your four books. He said, it's the most underlying series of books, markup series of books I own. How can I get more of what you have? So start where you, where you can see. I don't mean see with your natural eye. I'm saying, get in the word and get in the spirit and say, Lord, where do you want me to reach? And it may be a bit of a stretch. God told me to leave Idaho and drive down to Tucson, Arizona with two semi, not semi trucks, but the big giant U-Hauls full of my furniture. I didn't have a place to go. I just had a word from God, go down there. I didn't know where we were going to go. But I, I could see that he had something and I was going to go. When Rick and I were friends, and we first were friends with a lot younger back in the 80s, and I was living in British Columbia, and I was in a very dark place in my life and lost everything I could possibly have except for my physical life. One night I had a dream. It's the first time I woke up happy in years. And it was a dream. And all I saw was a map of the United States. And on the map in the southeast quadrant, there was a green dot. And I knew I was supposed to go there. And I didn't know why. But I packed up. I went to Dallas first with Rick and some other guys. And then I stayed on. And I went to, to Nashville, Tennessee, where I met and married a gal. We were married for 24 years. She passed away in 2010. But it was, I, I, I could see. I could see. I, I, I don't know the how, I don't know the method, but I could see. And if that's ignited in you, get it. And I, for your, listen, if anybody on this call thinks that, that this is going to financially alter my life for somebody to buy some books or to join the, the thing at even the most expensive one is like 5% of my minimum, my former minimum. It's not it. This is me being obedient to God. And I want to help you. I want, to help you if you do the mastermind group which it may not be right for you i'm not you know, that's for you to decide i can give more time to you because we're in a smaller group and i can give more and i'm happy to do that so anyways let me see will thank you so much for sharing i appreciate that um tabby after listening to my i now hear the word thank you gentlemen hey i don't know whether it's tabby or tabby but we've been communicating today and god bless you sister Tabby, uh, the H is silent. Say that again. Tabby, the H is silent. Ah, okay, Tabby. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I thought so. There are no audio of books available except for Psalm 91. Didn't we do Psalm 23? And we had the Bible incorporated on audio. Is that right? Did I do that one too? <laughs> no, the, the Bible incorporated book. That was done beforehand. That was done by Tennessee Ernie Ford's son, Buck Ford. Right. That's right. I spent Ten thousand dollars with voice and music bed, and it's great. You should get the Bible Incorporated. MichaelPink.com. I don't know. Wally can tell you how to get that. Um, oh, Monique, Monique said I asked him about those fat dude drops a few mornings ago. Love it. <clears throat> wow. Hey Judy, love you, sweetheart. I think that's my Judy. Hope that is. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Joseph. Kylie, I struggle with inconsistency in business. One month is up, next is down. The taxes, etc. What advice would you give to managers? Kylie, great question. Let me tell you something. The day of Pentecost, the day they say the church was born, that day, guess what? Some people were confused. Some people mocked. And why? Why were some people negative? Why were some confused? You know, some people just are. Why did some people say yes? You're going to find the business that there is you're going to have it, it it's i've wanted to have like a hundred percent unbroken you know success if you are consistency but what i have found is that you when when you're sowing the seed of your business when you're doing it some of that is going to land on hard ground some of it's going to land on stony ground and those are the people by the way that say hey, you know that's a great idea you know i i love what you got there kylie uh that's great i'm so excited and and then then they disappear 
And some of them say, I'll get in as soon as I can, but my life is so busy. They're the ones with the thorns. And then there's some that are in the, the good ground. And Kylie, I'm going to tell you something. If you want to get a little bit more consistent, the law of the parable of the sower is this. Pay attention. 17% of the seed that was sown produced 84% of the return. How do I know that? A little bit of sanctified common sense. If you take 100 seeds on the hard ground, 100 seeds, which produce nothing, 100 seeds on the rocky soil, which produce nothing, 100 seeds on the thorny soil with the thorns and weeds, they produce nothing. And 100 seeds go on the good ground and produce 30, 60, 100. So the 100 seeds, we just say, if it's 30, 60, 100, we'll say a third, a third, a third. So a third of 100 will be 33 seeds plus 33 seeds. So 66 seeds out of 400 seeds brought back. Some brought back 100 fold, which would be 3,300. And some brought back 60 fold, which would be 1,800, whatever it is. If you do the math on it, 17% of the seed brought 84% of the return. So the point of it is you have to say in my business, oh, let me tell you something. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. I got more to tell you. <laughs> this, this, Oh. That's why they joined the Jesus School of Business, Michael. Yeah, join the Jesus. I think Kylie did already. Yes, yes I know. That's, that's what I told her. I said, ask the question in the school. Yeah, no, but, but uh, oh no, it's okay. Listen, a lot of people. Wally saying good night, Mike. <laughs> listen, Kylie, 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 don't listen to them. Listen. <laughs> this is. Let me tell you something. A tree. This is in the school. A tree. Is the most perfect business model on earth. And every day when I walk out, not every day I do this, but many days when I walk out, I, I look at them and I I have all these trees around me and I and I look at them and I think, I don't hear anything. There's no stress. There's no complaining. There's no griping. There's no, what are we going to do, God? They, can, they do certain things on a consistent basis. I can't teach it, so Wally will be happy. I can, but I can't do it right now. But when, if you get inside this, you're going to listen. You're going to see, because I teach about this, Kylie. There are certain things that you do on a consistent basis. The trees do. They never fail. They have three forms of marketing. The one that's transactional has a three-step process. It does other things on a consistent basis without fail. And because of that, it produces consistently, which is why when you plant 100 seedlings in an orchard, you're going to have 100 trees five years from now producing fruit. When you take 100 entrepreneurs, they don't know the systems, they don't know what to do consistently, you're going to have 5% of them successful. There are certain things you have to do consistently, Kylie, and inside the school, you're going to learn it. So that, that's it. I'm, I'm trying to be nice to Wally because it's getting late. I'm sorry, Wally. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, you know, you're know, giving away the goods, man. That's what <laughs> <laughs> you know the, you, um, Michael, you know the principle of a good story, right? It, it, it finishes where it started. Where this started tonight was you teasing me about speaking quick, so I, I <laughs> so I'm, we're coming back. We're perfect ending. Everybody, Michael is the real deal. I've known him for forty years. He he seriously, and you saw me responding when he talked about he could go out and do this with corporate clients and have a lot more peace <laughs> and make a lot more money. He's he's this is what God's called him to do after teaching me everything he's done. So. The bottom line is, if the Lord has called you to business or career or anything like that, get in and get in at the level you need to be in. You will not be sorry. And from this point forward, Michael is going to talk quickly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap it up. I see Colin's asking great questions. Colin, let me just say this. I'm with you, brother. Do what you got to do. This is for individuals. I, I do have corporate clients that you know, buy it for other people but uh, or some of the staff, but it's mostly for individuals. Um, are you welcome, Don. Um, uh, uh, Wilma says, which of these books we recommend to start from reading? And Hey, here, here's where you start on the books. You open them up, you take a look at the table of contents, and you say, which, which chapter is calling my name right now? It's not a novel. You don't have to start at chapter one and go to chapter two, three, four. It's a logical way to go, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can say, I'm having a problem right now getting leads. What chapter deals with this? I'm having a problem closing sales. What chapter deals with this? I don't know how to start a business. What chapter deals with this? I don't know what nutrients are. I don't know whatever. Find the chapter and go there. That would be it. Uh, what's Judy says, if he gets started on trees, get ready to be here for a while. 
<laughs> that is my wife. Judy, I love you. You know I do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is, uh, oh, my gosh. I, I'm going to apologize right now because I want to go. I'm just getting wound up right now. I'm just getting lit. But, you know, I, I got, I can't, I, I got to stop. And Judah are waiting for you. Come on. Yes. My wife loves me. She's you amazing. Have the, you have the most healthy, blessed dog in the world because it gets preached at, it gets the word of God to meditate on all the time. Go preach at Judah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's great. <laughs> Listen, let me let me say this for those of you who have questions. Get the books. If you're here now, you know, make sure you get the books. And I would encourage you, if you're debating, debating whether to get in or not, at the least, sign up for the extra dollar. And you get a month and you can binge watch everything. And you, you'll be billed $97 in 30 days. But if you cancel, you won't be. So, you know, you might want to do it that way. And so you just see where, what, what you get in that first 30 days. So I would urge you to do that. Michaelpink.com slash join. I'm betting Wally's put a few links in there before. I could talk to midnight, but apparently Wally's got to go. <laughs> and he's running on midnight in UK. I'm just saying. Wow. Michael, you delivered as always. And I know, <laughs> known you for a long time. And I've heard some of the stuff that you went over, most of it. Um, and I know you made it short, but each one of those, each one of the things you went over is so impactful in itself. It's it, it's almost like robbing us by just giving us the little slices of the each pie. You just get a sample, right? Because you need to understand those concepts and go deep in them because there's so much of God's wisdom and God's truth there. But I want to say to everybody here, it's like, okay, I'm in Michael's group, but here's what I have, Okay. 40 plus years of friendship with Michael. So I can phone him up. And when I phone him up and I access that gift, that grace gift that he has, that has meant each and every time I've done that has meant tens of thousands of dollars because God just gives him the wisdom. He has so much information. He has it. So if all you can do is get the books, man, you've got access to that wisdom and the spirit of God will breathe on it. But I recommend... <laughs> that you have access to this man, not just because I'm glorifying the man, but I'm 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 honoring the gift that God has given him. And when you have access to him and you hear him talk and you can talk to him and ask him a question, the Spirit of God just takes all that knowledge that's been baked inside of him by the Holy Spirit, and he comes up with stuff that's just going to make such a difference in your life. And I know that because I've lived it over and over and over again. So that is why he is a friend of mine. I know him. I know his heart. He's the real deal. He's 100% after the Lord. He know he he lives his life by the word of God. He lives his life in the presence of God and he is a gift to the body of Christ in this area. So people, don't just walk, run, sign up. <laughs> Get the books at the very least. But right now, you, for one dollar, you can try the rest uh, for a month. I would personally, I'd skip it and go right to the mastermind. So, but that's me. Anyways, Michael, thank you. That was so awesome. I so enjoyed just listening to you. You're always, you always do such a great job of presenting. 